Oh. Do you want your iPad? <laughs> Yo, excuse me, Miss Lynn. Yeah. Have you ever seen a show with a couple on the mic with bad content and it don't come out right? We tight. They ain't never tight. And that's not polite. Am I lying? No, you're quite right. Well, tonight on this very mic, you're about to hear. We, we swear the, the best, best podcast, podcast of the year. So, so. Here we go. Scream Bravo. Also, also if you, you didn't know, know this, this is our show. show. Hey, I like that. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. Welcome to America Twinned Life. I'm your host, Mike Lynn, here with my beautiful wife and co-host, Erica Lynn. What's up, babe? What's up, y'all? I don't even know if we're back yet. I, yep, we are. I can see us. Okay. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Yo, just so y'all understand something, like, this is going to be, I, I just got to tell, explain, like, we just spent the last 40 minutes trying Anyone? to get on uh, live um, because... For whatever reason, it logged us all out of everything, and we couldn't get back in because I don't remember the password. And then it blocked me because I put the password <laughs> in too many times. <laughs> and so I basically had to start a whole new account for what we use to do this, just so y'all know. So This is what we get for taking how many weeks did I say? And then it looks like there's like some sort of a delay. Can you see that delay? Like, like one, two, three, maybe not. No, I don't, know. I don't see a delay. Why do I feel like there's a delay in my voice? But maybe not. Okay. Uh -huh. Anyway. We back, y'all. We here. So, thank y'all for being here on this beautiful Friday the thirteenth. I just so when you said that and it's Friday the thirteenth, I was like, oh, this was some Friday the thirteenth type that just happened. So, how many? How long has it been since we've been on live? It was uh, ten weeks. It's been ten weeks. I hate when people do that. That's how. Like, how old is your baby? Fifty. Fifty <laughs> one. Fifty six <laughs> months. Like, Nick, how old I is the baby? Damn it! <laughs> I originally said two and a half months. But it's two and a half months. So it's been months. two and a half months Which since we did a show. Which you had said about almost two months, and it was longer. Right. Two and a half months since we did a show, and then prior to that, well, how long has it been? It was a month and a half. A month and a half prior to that. So we really have only had two shows in the last six or so months, or five months, maybe? Four months. Okay. <laughs> Your math ain't math. <laughs> Mom, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty sad. That's a lot. That yeah, that's a lot, of, that's a lot of time that passed. That's pretty sad. Uh, somebody just said can't view. I don't know. Like, can you view? Can't view. Oh, we have four people watching right now. So that, there's there, at um, least you guys know we're on here. So no, they're they're, they're definitely. I'm gonna to let see. her know we came on. Yeah, people are uh, concerned because we were supposed to be on here a long time ago, and uh, and we're here now. So <laughs> enjoy the show. Um, yo, where have we been over the last two and a half months? We've been so many different places. I really want you all to uh, get a good understanding of where we've been. There's been a lot that's happened. That's why Listen, she can't have cups up here without tops to them. He says that even though it hasn't happened, but we're just a little discombobulated right now. What? Just a smidge. What hasn't happened? Spilling something up Because you ain't had nothing but bottles and <laughs> no, tops I've, on I've it. I've had a couple You know how many times you've done that live on the show? <laughs> that's right. Are you serious? That's probably a compilation. In yeah. <laughs> I mean, What? How are you going to get indignant about something you know you got a problem with? Because I haven't actually done it yet. Because you have <laughs> always bottles with tops on them. I just, well, we just go. had the same problem sitting watching TV the other day. You? you had this this drink that's like super red. What was No, it was pop. Was it pop? No. I can't remember what it was. It was something that was, like if you spilled it on the carpet, it would have made a huge mess. And I'm like, yo, just put the top like, on. You, like, that, please? you got like, upset. Like, I don't need to put the top on. Because I, well, I was in the middle of drinking. <laughs> but my question is, why would you Why would you want to take the snotty. chance with how 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 uh, uncoordinated you be around Actually, what I think I did, drinks? as I said, as many times if you spilled stuff on the carpet. I don't, I yeah, like, but no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. did, take your, I mean, take your... Uh, Take I your time and be it. careful. I was like, all right. Anyways, uh, where have we been? So we were riding down the street the other day on our bikes, coming back from uh, our bike ride. And we stopped at Myers to downtown to get some food. 
and we passed it was Tuesday and we passed by like the whole the old uh the old um uh city council crowd and we was like what the hell? It, and they was like, Where have y'all been at? And it was just funny because like what? I mean that's how I felt. I'm gonna just talk about how I felt. Like what? Like we have become a staple in environments that are the most stressful in the world. Like these are environments that people only go to because they're like dealing with a tax problem and they need to go talk to their constituent, like or their um council you know, their member. council member or whatever the case is. Like we had something. became so so uh, you know, such a permanent fixture in these spaces yeah. that when we haven't been there for two months, which is all of four meetings, people are asking, Where have y'all been? What? It's summertime, yo, but I'm just like real. We've never we, taken this. Yo, the reality of the situation is we have never taken a break like that. Mm-mm. We've never taken a full on break where we're not calling in. We're not doing shows. We're not showing up to it. Mm-hmm. We haven't done that in five years, basically. Even while sick, while other things are going on. Yo, we've been both with the COVID calling into, you know, uh, these issues or both been sick, you know, trying to get to these these you know, committee meetings or whatever the case is. I'll be honest with you, yo, like that, that moment that I did that we came there and that happened, I was like, yo, we doing the right thing by stepping back, man, because we became too much of a fixture. Now I know the people that said it love us and they were just like, where y'all been at? You know, like, and they probably was like, you know, like we need your advocacy here and that's cool. But yo, we have really, I've found so much solace in just backing up, man. Like just backing up for a second and just and like letting y'all handle it for a minute, man. Like just letting y'all handle it. I think like another city is not burned up. You know what I'm saying? Because we ain't been there. Uh, and I'll tell you, to be honest with you, like and we talked about it on the show, like the last two times that we went to committee, the commissioner meetings, um, the um, city city charter commission meetings. Mm-hmm. I recognized my heart rate going up and I was getting frustrated. And I was like, nope, I ain't doing it. I'm getting away from this for right now. Um are we going to be gone forever? No. I mean, once they start to dig into the, to the uh, charter, we absolutely are going to be in the, in the building and in helping that process along. Uh, but I can't be there every day. Yo, just listening and getting upset about, you know, the new, the new um, pilot they got coming out or <laughs> the ovation changed the contract a little bit. And I'm, a, I'm like, my heart's racing. Cause I'm feeling like something going like, I can't do it no more. How about you? I think I echo that. And then, like to give an example for right for like the charter commission i realized as we were coming to these early meetings like there's a whole lot of you know as a as a duty you know i i when when i was running for the charter commission i remember thinking like we're gonna have to take the time out in the initial beginnings to really educate people on a whole bunch of stuff to give a whole lot of background give like context you know what it is what the charter is what the pro like all these things right and i realized that i was coming to every meeting through this process, you know? And I'm like, that that's not something that I have capacity for right now. So I was just like, you know, when, once we get in past that step and we're getting into the actual work, opening it up, digging into there and, and all of that, that's when I'm like, that's where I'm better served. Because another thing I realized, we often are prioritizing all of that over a whole lot of other things. And so we're in a constant state of like a hamster wheel because we've let this so now we're in crunch time and we're expecting you know we're not going home going to sleep till one in the morning because we're doing all of this we did a meeting think about what time we get out of out of meetings oh i know committee meetings charter meetings but council I, a meetings, lot of other meetings. things are being left out yes because of that and too. we and when we would get to them were they getting our due time were they getting our best no but i mean i think it's deeper than that for me to be honest with you what i've recognized and I, there's a lot we need to address on this show uh, there's a lot that's happened and transpired up to this point that I think y'all may not know. We haven't talked about in, in depth, but um, there's some relationship building that's happened over the last six months or so that's changed a lot of the way that we advocate. Um, one thing I will say is that I and I always knew that this would be this would be true. I knew that the moment that we could break these barriers down between us, the advocates and those who have the power to change. Once we broke the barrier down and start having a good conversation, I knew we would get to some places very quickly that we had just been whining and complaining and crying about. Like, don't get me wrong. Whining, complaining and crying are not negatives that I'm saying like we're doing something wrong. I'm saying it was our only 
avenue. tool and avenue. Like I, I really honestly look at this and if I was going to give an analogy to this, it'd be like a baby, right? A baby only has one way of knowing how to get food, how to get their diaper changed, how to get picked up, cry. They don't have the English there. They don't have the language to be able to say, I'm hungry, feed me, or I, I need love. I need you to hold me, hang, you know, handle me. They couldn't do that. Now, similarly to people who aren't having at getting access to those who are in power to make change, you have to just cry. And I always, I always attested to like, you know, if, if I'm screaming from around the block and you can hear that, like, why wouldn't you come around the block and find out what's wrong with me? But at the time, like nobody really cared about any of that. So there was this disconnect and nobody wanted to really call the loudest voice in to have conversation. Well, some things have changed. There's some some relationships being built. We touched on it. We talked about us going out to Omaha with some of the folks from the mayor's office, uh, Kim Coleman from HRCS, um, Delisa Fontaine from the Neighborhood Citizens Engagement, Luciana Solis from the mayor's office, the faith-based communities uh, liaison, uh, Chief Backus. Uh, we all went out there like as a, a unit representing Probably Lansing uh, in the Omaha, excuse me, at the Omaha Empowerment Network Summit. And it changed things, yo. We was able to really break bread with each other, conversate, figure out where we were on things, uh, where disconnects were. We we were able to find out that, you know, we had some misconceptions about each other. Uh, it was just a lot that transpired. So it's changed the way we were able to advocate. That's what I'm trying to say, ultimately, is that we were using a lot of our platform to get the loudest, the loudest voice to be actually heard, even though the loudest voice should be the one they pay attention to. They weren't paying attention to it. And we were even getting stated like, oh, that's just the loudest voice. So we had to use our platforms and all of our influence to try to get those voices forward. Right. The most marginalized voice forward. But now. Through relationship building, we've been able to get into spaces where we no longer have to cry about these things or yell or scream or, you know, demand. We've actually been able to get some things done that we're trying to get done through just conversation. You know, so things have changed. I mean. The way that we advocate has changed. There used to be a time when you I, we would have to go down to City Hall Mondays and use three minutes, uh, you know, to lambast and tell them all the problems and all the things they need to do better and yada, 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 yada. And and ultimately, I felt like we weren't really getting anywhere like we it, it, it was creating an environment where there was like this standoff because like y'all are yelling at us and we don't want to be yelled at. So we just ain't going to do nothing. And I acknowledge that, that that's the reality of what was happening. And so over the last six months, there's some been some relationship healing and building that has changed the way I can advocate for things that we need. And as you all know, one of my biggest things that I advocate for and we advocate for is uh, safety and gun violence prevention. And so we have created a lane that has allowed us to do that without the loud voice all the time having to be us. We are it's called a collaborative. We have a collaborative right now that's involves many stakeholders from across the city. And I'm about to I'm about to blow y'all mind. I'm about to shock y'all with this one. I hope y'all paying attention. The mayor, Mayor Shore, has been in pretty much every meeting since he was invited. And if you guys don't remember, it was back in, I believe, sometime around April or May that I came to a council meeting and I invited him personally to the Omaha 360 or Lansing 360 meetings. And then later on that that day after the meeting, he called me down and talked to me, and asked me where the information was, how you get it. I told him I'd get it to him. And he hasn't missed a meeting since. That's amazing, man. So when I'm talking about like the ability to make the change we're looking for without having to do the activism, we're on our way to that. Um, the transparency and accountability we've been able to have in these meetings that we've been holding with all of these stakeholders has been amazing. So it's been offering us the opportunity to have real dialogue and discussion around these issues where we're having a back and forth, but it's, it's, it's healthy and we're trying to figure out solutions to these problems. And what I found in all honesty is that I think that people want to do right by people. I don't, you know, it's just crazy. And I've said this a thousand times, but like, there's not a whole lot of people in the world who just want to hurt people. And that's their focus. But there is a lot of people who are derelict of duty and ignorant to how not to hurt people. And so they just do what they know. And so when we're having this dialogue and telling them, no, that's harmful, that's harmful, that works, that works best, you know, that's good. 
we're getting places in this in this scenario now. We're getting places where people are leaving better than they came into the conversation. It's really been good, man. Uh, you know, so that that's really what I wanted to say about our advocacy. It hasn't stopped. I think Alyssa, Alyssa Tersak said, I can't wait to hear about all the backroom stuff, you know, like advocating you guys are doing. You know, we ain't just sat down she on our hands. I appreciated that. But we absolutely have went to a different a different strategy, way of doing this, yeah. a different strategy to get the things that we need done for the people. And it's working. And yes. it's working, yo. And just just to be clear, let me just name why I think this happened, this change has happened. Because it's not like this just came out of nowhere. Um, you guys may not know this, but just to be true, transparent as I can be, is that all of my le legal issues that I had with the city are over with. So we're past it. Um, I can't disclose exactly how it turned out. I can say that it was favorable, uh, but it's over. And so... There has always been this conversation around the litigation being the reason why we can't have discussion. Like if I ever was trying to get to the bottom of a scenario and I was like, I need to talk to such and such, they'd always say, we're in litigation. We can't speak to you, yada, yada, yada. So it really put me in a spot where I had to yell and I had to lambast and I had to use that three minutes because everybody was concerned because we were in litigation. This was a big case going on. Well, that's over now. And I don't know if that's the reason why all of these doors are opening and things are being able to be, we're able to have conversation, but whatever the case is, it's like we are all a team moving towards a goal instead of it being um, one-sided. And now is there conflict? Of course, there's still going to be conflict. As of course, there's going to be disagreements. Of course, there's going to be things that don't uh, line up to what our morals are or what we want to see. But that doesn't mean that it has to be a knockdown, drag out war anymore. Now we can have discussion around that. And that's just so powerful, man. I don't know how to explain it. I really feel good about the direction the city is going in right now as it pertains to gun violence. Uh, and that's what, again, you guys know, that's our main focus. Our life's work in this that's our work, right? Yeah. And so I don't know. I've been out of the loop on what's happening with like home homelessness and like housing and all of that good stuff. But uh, the more that I know about the people that are in spaces that can do something about it, I feel better anyways about how those things might possibly turn out. I know Mike, uh, Mike Carl had started having similar meetings with the, the powers that be. And he started talking about how they were moving in the right direction and things were moving better. So I don't know if the, the administration has learned us better and really has like sat into their own and wants to like be better and learn more and bring community in. But it's working. Whatever they're doing, whatever we're doing in the community, it seems to be working. Um, so that's it. That's that's really what it is. We have not stopped advocating. We have just been advocating in a different, and I believe what I believe to be a more effective way. Yeah. So that's that. I mean, I, there's not a whole lot to say about that other than our Lansing 360 meetings that are a gun violence prevention coalition, excuse me, in collaboration um, are every Wednesday from 12 to one o'clock. Our next, our in-person meeting, our very first one will be October 9th at Foster Community Center. It is from 12 to one as well. Uh, people you can see in the meeting is anybody you could think of this in any director position has been in the meetings, uh, the school districts in the meeting, the police department chiefs in the meeting, the investigative uh, captain is in the meeting, uh, VCI, the violent crime initiative captain is in the meeting. Um, we've had state police there. Uh, we've had the uh, FBI there. Uh, the fire chief is there. Chief start event. Mayor Shore is there. Uh, Emily Divendorf has been there. We've had folks from the mayor's or from the governor's office there. Um, the AG's office. The AG's office are the there pretty much the every HHS, week. Uh, violence intervention office. Yes. Yeah, so like this is what all of these people, all oh, the probation, the courts, the judges. I mean, all of these people are in one space figuring out what they can do from their arena to work on gun violence. Oh, and there's so much. I mean, we may not even have time tonight, but there's just a lot that you learn when you get to have people in the same space and, I think that's why it's important to really recognize why collaboratives um, that are built on a foundation of transparency, uh, trust, and accountability, which is like, I want, that's what I was going to say a bit ago is the transparency and accountability. That's a, it's like one of the main focuses of this collaborative mm -hmm. is transparency and accountability amongst all of us from each other. It's learning how to build community with each other, whether or not, you know, Mike always uses uh, the, the analogy of like, we, we want to build a road, like, you know, we, we can 
talk about, you know, what, what materials to use or, or how many, you know, people we need. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me quote me. Okay, my bad. Because you finna tear that up. (laughs) I wasn't. Anyways, I was gonna. You finna tear it up. I was gonna move on. I wasn't gonna give the whole analogy. Well, let me give the analogy. It's a good one. Yeah. So if we can all decide that we want our roads fixed and we can all agree to that, then we can figure out what we make the roads out of later. So we've basically applied that to this space, to this room. And, you know, we, we, we honor it by beginning the, the, the space in saying we're not here to shame, blame, or attack anyone. And if we're in this room, then we're in there to seek solutions and to take action on said solutions. So with the 360 model and 360 solutions, the 360 room, whatever you want to call it, if you think about 360, right? We, we understand what, what a 360 mindset would be. Um, you have to have some credibility, some trust. You have to have accountability. You have to have transparency to be in that space, but it's cross sector involvement. I mean, when, when Mike's listing all those places out or, you know, those orgs and representations out, you got to think about that because you have that mixed in with residents, people, individuals, parents, school districts. You have it mixed with nonprofit organizations from different sectors. And where's the intersection? It's intersecting at gun violence. Right. Because we all know that it's not one person's job. We've always said that, right? Yeah. And if we keep saying we keep us safe, community keeps us safe, um, we have to teach people in the community how to be in relationship with us. Right. And and how we can build trust and all these different things. So that's what we've been doing. And I'm 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 very proud, <laughs> very, very proud up to this point of how it's been going, the work that it's that's been done. You know, I'm you know, I sit in that space sometimes and I'm just like, <laughs> it's I would never have thought this is crazy. <laughs> like it's it's surreal at times because I've been in that same I've had people remind me like last time I saw on a Zoom call with such and such, this happened, and I'm like, Yeah, different day. Yeah, no, it's good, man. It's like we all hit a reset button and uh we're moving forward on what what's needs important. to happen. The kids and people and you know, people people living. Uh, to get to all the resources that are out here. So, like, th- it's been amazing, you know. Like, honestly, if you guys ever want to check into it, Erica can drop the link right here uh, for the Zoom link. It's just a Zoom right now. Again, our first in-person will be October 9th, but you can pop into the link at any point in time from 12 to 1 o'clock on Wednesday. So, that's that. I mean, there's not a whole lot there, but it's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do plan on coming to. back to the commission meetings as they start to build out what this this charter will look like. We're just not going to be in every space, that you know, every space, every day, all day anymore. And so what did that mean for us? I mean, without just continuing to belabor that situation, what it meant for for us is that we was able to, like, get back to who we are uh, just as people and not advocates. Like, that's great. Everybody gets us as advocates, but we didn't get each other anymore as people. And so we were missing out on a whole lot of life. Like, I recognized, I started to recognize I hadn't seen a Monday night football game in years because of Monday night um monday night meetings at council you know like there was a lot of stuff that i was missing out on like i hadn't been to a michigan state game like it was like so much stuff that we love to do that we just hadn't done i mean just so much so we started doing that stuff and like over the last this whole summer has been amazing we found bikes like we talked about this on the show i think but last last time we were on but we've got electric bikes now and e-bikes and it, it just changed our lives you know so like we're able to you know bike 10 15 20 miles a day and i mean you know it's not really biking it's like riding a moped but um, <laughs> it's biking. it's 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 good for <laughs> mental health though like getting out oh we God. love our trails Get we, out we like grass. to ride the city trail lansing city trails is top notch um and so other than the fact that they got it shut off so we can't get out to east lansing what pisses me off because there's no reason why they couldn't clear a trail to us to get through there, yo. Like well, it's such assholeish. It. If they're not working on it, but it's just period. It's been all summer, the entire summer. You know, and then anytime we do figure out a trail, they block it off. You're like, why were y'all? Why are y'all doing that? And I want to be clear, it's not blocked off because there's active work being done. It's just with equipment, yeah, and materials just sitting there. And for so the whole there's summer. there's absolutely a way that they could like make a trail make a for you to be able to get through and they we just, know we ain't getting to this this summer so yeah. let's just make a trail for people to get through it so anyways though but like we've been able to you know ride our bikes see the whole trail and there's more trail coming y'all if you didn't know that they're building onto the trail so it's it's just it, we've been able to get back to those things you know what i mean and and that's just stuff we weren't able to do and i think that started in the beginning of the summer like it was like once we got those e-bikes it became like damn do we feel like going to sitting in this daggone council meeting all day for for what like 
and then we just decided like one day I'm like I'm just going riding you. I'm not I'm not going to sit in this council meeting. And it we was didn't. this one day. It was one day. We had a stack of things to do. We had like three things on top. It of was each other. oh I know the day it was. It was it was Kyle, uh, yep, his uh, campaign. Yep, and, and we big won. up to Kyle. But it was like totally so Kyle's thing at the Fledge. There was a n- it was neighborhood. a neighborhood meeting. I believe it was like a, I don't know like an event or something. Yeah, no, it was a neighborhood it was meeting. A neighborhood. It was a uh, South Side. I don't know. It was one of the neighborhood meetings on the South Side. Okay. And council, and I was just like. I'm not well, going we were to walking none of out that. the door, stressed, trying to figure out how we were going to make each um, each of us logging immediately off of work, like work, work, worked all day, and in the hallway on our way out, we decided, man, I'm just going to ride, and we did, and that was since that point, it was like I don't know, I don't like you get to switched. a point, and it's not no blissful ignorance, like I know people sit in that. You get to a point though where like when when is that meeting again? Again, the other day when we was riding by and we recognized it, it was a like, charter oh. meeting. Like oh shoot, I didn't recognize. It was like seven thirty. I was like, "Oh y'all, okay. Oh yeah, it's a charter meeting today, yeah. right?" But you know that used to be my schedule. Like that was my schedule, like all week. This is the this is the meetings on Monday. This is the meeting on Tuesdays, meetings, Wednesday meetings, meeting. Thursday HRCS. You know, like it was just consistent, constantly, and it was really affecting my health. Yeah, it was like a really affecting my mental health, like all of those things. So I just feel it was, bad. Somebody said uh, when it was like. You, you haven't missed anything like literally yeah. and then she's like um we're just do- we've been doing the community listening sessions whatever and i laughed and i said you know i think the community and y'all have probably heard enough out of me <laughs> like i mean i think I don't- that's good for them to hear from the community <laughs> and we're not overshadowing it i want y'all to hear from all of them because we're gonna I- get in there and we're gonna get active when it comes time but i think right now it's good for y'all to hear from everybody else without us swaying a room or you know like i want the community to have the charter they need and want right i don't want everybody thinking so that's the crazy thing is like people really don't know what we want you know what i mean like you think you know what we want but you don't but i'm 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 happy to hear what other people say they need or want and then you know when they come to building this i just hope that it's a collaborative uh process i just really hope that it's not like us them or them us mm-hmm. and it's collaborative like let's just make the best charter for our city i think that we'll get there genuinely um, looking at all of the yeah. you know possibilities and references yeah. and having good robust collaborative discussion yeah that's all we'd ever hoped for mm-hmm. and you had said that from the beginning you're like i believe that there's an there's good there's, those people are going to do what they're here to do ain't nobody just so that's another just thing like, like we, there's nobody that's like some diabolical. double agent yeah diabolical i always have to tell people that you too like it's nothing diabolical about this you watch too many crime dramas this is not what that is and i'm a natural cynic since chi- a child i'm untrust i i don't trust and i'm a cynic and i'm like no. i just know people are lazy and it takes <laughs> it takes a lot of work to be diabolical that's what i'm trying to say like most people are lazy and they don't want to do nothing extra. Like, that is too much and you know how much extra it takes to be diabolical on that level? Yeah. To like go and run for some shit, campaign, do all of that, get in here just, just to do to some like- <laughs> <laughs> No, they lazy. People are lazy. Like, I ain't doing none of that. They I hear, believe them. I bet you half them right now wish they had never applied. I know. They're like, dang, man. But I meeting. believe sometimes that the mwahaha comes like as an opportunity like it just is like oh i didn't recognize i had a chance yeah so like like, right now we don't even know like how is the city attorney doing like there was the big switch so that's another thing we got a whole new city attorney's office there's a there's been a lot that's transpired since we've been on here live that i have no control over no i'm just saying like a lot of things have changed yo a lot of things have changed yo um you know it's just a lot it's a lot that's changed up to now so life talking because we sometimes we don't always talk about the we get into like the advocacy side the politics side right and all of that and something i'm you know we, we've talked about a lot is the the desensitization of of Ooh. like a de- desensitization Ooh. okay there you go my brother Ooh, that was you almost because i was trying to i was trying to keep my gum give you cpr if you get that that word almost had you dead <laughs> <laughs> go ahead <laughs> <laughs> but all of that with just like human beings and people as a whole right and a lot of the things that we do and sometimes i think we're all so busy in like the fight or flight mode and in the advocacy mode and the organizing mode and all these things that you know you forget that we're all people and and the things that we're fighting for the things that we're organizing for it all leads back you know to people in their lives and when we took the 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 step back from other things and again not a step back i I can't even say that like oh we took it we're on a sabbatical because we were not um at all we we were working very hard um 
reprioritizing and kind of putting time and capacity in different places. But something that we don't talk about a lot, and I won't ever speak for Mike. Mike can obviously speak for himself on what how he wants to frame that. But I know for me personally, there's a lot of times where my capacity is limited. You know, if you know anything about the spoon theory or anything similar to that, um, I don't have an infinite number of spoons. I live with lupus. I do not have a, an, an infinite number of spoons. You got lupus? <laughs> when was you going to tell me that? So very often I was expending all of my spoons and tomorrow's and the next days um, on all of these things. And so not leaving anything left for anything or anyone. And very often I, I started to kind of revisit things and think about things and say, like, you know, we don't very often talk about the capacity that it takes both mentally, emotionally, physically, all of these things to be so heavily involved in all of these different ways. And we don't ever step back to say, how is that affecting A, B or C? Right. And when it's like you had said, you, you offhandedly, I noticed that you like just kind of breezed by it like it was affecting our health. But that's a big deal. Like, that's a big deal. When things are affecting your health, when you're starting to have, you know, flare ups of different things, you know, all of, you got to step back and say, Am, you know, and, and my doctor would ask, well, you know, you, you could do this and you could do that. And it's always like, no, I can't. No, I can't. But what's the alternative? You know, what's the alternative if you don't? If you don't start reprioritizing and you don't start triaging and thinking about what you have to, you know, limit, et cetera, what's the alternative? I, we've both seen some of the alternatives here and there. And I, I was like, nope, I don't right. want to, don't want to risk that anymore. But we don't ever, we don't ever talk about that, discuss that. And, and, you know, not that it, we would. I but. just feel like we always use the term intentional mm -hmm. and we wasn't being intentional. No, we was being, we was being way, way, way too out there. Burning the candle at both ends at all times. Gotta be everything. intentional, yo. Like I can't just Strategic show up everywhere screaming with everybody. I got way too much going on, but also I think we have a little more, like, a little more access to getting the change we want. Yeah, we, we can have a little bit more things. strategy behind things. Yeah, and those strategies are be are fruitful. We're seeing some some dials move. We're seeing some needles move. We're seeing some actions happening. We're seeing fruits of our labor. And others laborers and and watching around us. Other people in different arenas are kind of moving the same way. Yeah. So I think Lansing is in a optimal They're in space. such an optimal place that we're gonna switch our topics <laughs> and uh and move towards more of you know, we always say this, but I think it's really for our mental health, I think it's gonna be good. But speaking of that, um obviously we have the Democrat Republican uh Debate. What is it? Debate? Yeah, the general, the primary. Debate. What do you want to call it? The primary general. I don't know. Whatever. The it was debate. just a debate. The, the only debate, debate we're gonna see. The one debate. The what'd one you, and What did you think about it? Um, I thought it was everything that I thought it was and wasn't going to be. If that makes any sense. I was really surprised how calm Trump was. Like how he, That's like, funny. what? That's funny that you said you used the word calm. He wasn't. I mean, as he was as, pissed. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Oh, okay. As Kamala was was giving him the business. Oh. He wasn't doing what he usually does and try to like over talk and yell and like do the you know like they was cutting the mic off on them. They was like lowering yeah. it and uppering it, and lowering yeah. it. But I just I was like, I don't know what the, who this Trump is. Did you didn't think that? No. I think that he knew better. I think that his handlers finally did. he know better job. the last time? So I think he's an opportunist. And I think with Biden, Biden, he understood his deficiencies, just like we all could. We can see them, hear them, feel them with Biden, right? So he could, that work, that strategy of getting loud. Oh, she's saying he knew better than trying to come at Harris like that because she was going to give him the business. Kamala was going to give him the straight business if he would have oh, done that. Okay. And he, she would have embarrassed him. Oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. Boy. This is what I'm talking about. Oh. Samara said because he didn't have an audience. I'm telling you, it was that something is. different, and you're right. And I recognize that that was odd. He couldn't play to the crowd. They, that was odd that this time they did not have an audience because they've had audiences prior. And that was like, because it was like this, just this blue room and they was all in. And I'm just yeah. telling you, it was different. It was a different Vibe. Trump than I'm seeing before. <laughs> and that's what it is. He didn't have an audience to play to because he can usually 
jump off that audience and like get them riled up by saying some dumb stuff. Right. But when he said stupid stuff, it just sat in the air Awkwardly. and it didn't have, it didn't have nobody yeah. to rile it up. And like, when he oh, said those like outlandish, like yeah. things, it was yes. like crickets. Right. <laughs> that was, I forgot that that was one of the rules and they were complaining about that now. Yeah. Like they're, they're like, we won't be doing another one. It was super biased and all this thing, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, eh. right. Yeah. Rob said, I feel like every step was necessary, though. Like how Gordon Ramsay steps into a failing restaurant, curses oh. everyone out, and then they all love each other. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> That's funny, Rob. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and the end result is great food and a better restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, nah, that's crazy. Yeah, I didn't Joy even think about that. that. Too, there yeah. wasn't an audience. There wasn't a crowd. But it seemed it, it was weird watching him with no crowd. I guess that I is. didn't recognize. I think I did at some point in time I remember I that there wasn't together, a crowd yeah. there. But I, I think I wasn't recognizing it. A lot of times he's saying something extra that seems like he's talking over somebody because the crowd is like, woo, or like, yeah. You know, he's like, you know, he just keeps going. Like, you know, like anybody who's like trying to control the crowd would do. Yep. That's crazy. What a difference. I'm what telling you. What a difference. So yeah. let's think about like, so, oh, I know another thing that caught me off guard was when he was like, he got told that he said something quoted and he was like, I did. I said that. Like, it was like, damn, you really just be talking off the cuff and don't be recognizing that, yo, you're on every camera in the world is recording you, bro. You can't say nothing that we ain't caught. But did you see how quick he was with the lie right after? Yeah, he, of I course. Once like, he recognizes I'm oh, stuck. Oh, I was being sarcastic. And yeah. That. And I was just like, mm, okay. That was, I mean, that, that was, was, it was a vulnerable, it was a vulnerable, yeah, it was a vulnerable moment for Donald Trump, yo. It was a vulnerable moment. I still just don't understand how, like, it's funny because Kamala finally did bring it to the fact that you're a 35 time felon and and you're still being indicted on all these other things. Like, but when she says that, it doesn't hit as hard as you would think it would. To, for her to no. say, you're standing up here with me, who is the vice president currently, and you have 35 felonies. You couldn't get a job at McDonald's with that. Literally. And it's just, it, but when somebody says it, it's just it's like, like a, oh yeah, he does have that. Decent, Anyways, decent so how do you, what's your policy on financial? Like what? Wait a minute. How do we just roll off of that? Oh yeah. Uh, we wouldn't have hired him at ACS. You got fraud. Sorry. I don't think you can't get, even yeah, get on the phone. For real. Literally. For real, you, can't you can't control get on the no phones. credit card. No, but you can't have access to no financial felonies, information. You can't have none of that. With fraud, you can't have no access no to financial nothing. Cre- a nonprofit couldn't put you in no. position of fi- handling finances. Mm-mm. But you got the whole budget of the United States. Come what? on, man. <laughs> what episode Come of on, Black Mirror is this? <laughs> yo, we need to dude, we need to wipe America off and start over again, yo. <sighs> How would that look if we did that, though? Like, what parts of the Constitution would you keep and get rid of or uh, bolster? <laughs> what parts? Yeah. I don't know. I think we would need to do a whole Charter Commission type review. <laughs> you know, all of the Constitution is to protect us. Right. But when it was written. And our rights. We weren't included in us. No, no, no. I know that. I mean, <laughs> so, but the, the amendments supposedly are, though. <laughs> so, the amendments. So written by those who, those, get, them, get them black folks in there. Get the, get the, get the, get the 130th get Amendment. For the, yeah, get the women something, too. <laughs> Put them in there with the blacks. <laughs> Damn. Oh my goodness. Oh man. We got some great TikTok songs off the yeah, the some of the so can we just acknowledge how unhinged some of the comments are in like I had I commented oh, this you guys on, talking I, about the just all of the this TikTok songs that are coming out of some of the comments made, but just how unhinged a lot of it was in in how we are very desensitized at this point to that. But it was a debate. It's a presidential debate. And some of the things that were said were just so outlandish, outlandish and erratic that I was just like, did that just ha- this just got said. Rob said what's wild debate. is that his base still considers that debate a they win do. for him. I've seen it. It took me a minute to realize that he they don't care about mm-hmm. the questions. They care about his response to her points and jabs. So to them, as long as he had a refute to what she said, exactly. He didn't have to answer any questions. Him versus her, her words. That's the debate to them. That's real. It was, it was he a lot of He can be loud and like, wrong as long as he was loud. How many times, did, what's the guy's name who was the moderator? I can't remember. How can you not know this? I don't. Erica, I, who's the guy who played? I, what is what is Mr. Miyagi's real name? Oh, I don't know. Really? I actually don't know. And I, wa- I watch interviews by him all the time. I love, I enjoy What's the woman's out. name that killed Selena? <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> oh gosh, I can't, Yolanda Saldivar. <laughs> 
How would you know that? Like, we hate She's her. She's the person that killed Selena. We all hate her. She's not Yolanda. <laughs> She's Yolanda. She gets her right? name. Oh my god. That's. Oh my god. Okay, let me see what else. Um, who else? Who is? What's the guy's name that plays Victor Newman on Young and Restless? His name is Victor Newman. Let's. I don't know his real name. But you be he knowing this type. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You His be knowing this Victor stuff. Newman. No. Some of them. I always try to tell you. I don't know how or why, and I've tried to track it. I do. What's know the some girl random... name that died? That was on. Um, what's the What's the one show? Oh my gosh, Stacey Dash was in it with, and they were oh, like high Brittany, school. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't huh? think of her last name. She died of the flu. Yeah, What's her name? It's, it's uh, Brittany. Uh, I can't think of her last name. Brittany something. Hold on. Is anybody the one that comment? said, should I listen to a virgin oh, that David, can't drive? David Muir. Oh, that was the moderator. Okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know his name. Yo, I'm just, why are we going through this? Because Erica is like, she she's, she's like um, Rain Man when it comes to knowing <laughs> like stars' names. And I what remember, I mean by that is like, but I don't, there's I know, no rhyme or reason. Okay, so what's the main character Brittany of Law and Order? The lady that Brittany died. Murphy, the, 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 lady in, the lady in Brittany Murphy, so you yeah. knew that. What's the lady's name that is in Law and Order? You mean um, Benson? Yeah. Marissa Hargrave. See, who knows that? <laughs> Anybody that watches what's the Law guy and What's the guy in Miami, uh, uh, CSI Miami, that, that always does his shades that pisses me off? Oh, I can't remember his name. He was on NYPD Blue, the redhead. Yeah. He's like, you don't know his name? I can't remember his name. I'm going to have to let uh, you get David out. Sun yeah. <laughs> How you don't know this stuff when I'm putting you on the spot? And you know this stuff know. all the time. No, that's the thing. It's not when Oh, quizzed. you got a certain Rain Man in you. It's <laughs> everything. Yes, it's not when quizzed. It's like when you talk about something and there's some context, my brain will find it somewhere like, oh, I remember. Because I, oh, you know I what? read a lot. That's I got a Rain Man thing of my own. What? And I recognize it doing my CPO class. What? I remember every building I've ever walked into. Like, I can see it. This is true. This is a fact because I. So let's yes. try this. Let's try this, you guys. Na Anybody in the comments section, name a building. We did this. I have to have walked in it before. Yes. But name so a building a anywhere in the city. And I want to tell you how I tested him. And with flying colors. How many speedways are there in freaking Lansing? He can, everyone that he's walked into. And I made sure I matched up with the ones that I know of. Oh, I can remember everything. And he knew. Candy I'm like, aisle. where's the? I'm like, where's the candy? Where's the register? Does this one have a cafe? Where is this? He knew exactly. Where's the cooler? The walk-in freezer. I've got a picture perfect memory. If I've yeah. walked in and seen, I, it, I am can terrible see it at again. stuff like that. I'm like, I'm walking through, like making my way downtown, just right. like <laughs> Marissa Hargitay. Hargitay, yeah, I got it right. Oh, oh did I say I might have said her last name wrong? So name a right. building. Name um, a space that you know I've been in, but would be okay. difficult to name. But you also have to know the building yeah. so that you can like and tell me if I'm right the layout. Let me think of the layout of, let's see. Let's say, no, because we were that's too soon. We were, we were just there. Let me think of a place that, it's been a while. Um, oh, I can't think of anything. Damn, throw a name um, out. Throw anything out. Oh, I know, because this is a different one, and we don't go there often. Uh -huh. The Frandor Kroger, because it's the only one that has Easy. a different layout. Simple. What do you want to know? Just when you walk in. When What's... you walk in, you walk past the change machine. On the left is liquor. On the right, in that first aisle, is all of the uh, registers. Straight back is your produce. That's your all your potatoes, tomatoes. Greens, beans, potatoes, all that. <laughs> then on that back aisle is all the meat. Oh, I have a good one. Okay. This was, I, was I right? Do you remember yes, that? Yes, you remember. Okay, you guys, was I right? I have a good one all right. because they're closed and they've been closed for a long time now. Kmart on Cedar. Oh, easy. Hell I know yeah. this like the back of my hand because my mom loved her some Kmart. Yeah, Kmart, go in the doors. To the left was your... Um, your little restaurant thingy that sold like your uh how far to the left all the way and they sold your pretzels and all of that good stuff and then there was also the lanes were right there to the left as well and all the way to the back was your layaway Ooh, remember that they used to have layaway at kmart yeah. 
and to your left was the layaway and uh your shoes all your like you know whatever shoes kmart sold <laughs> um yeah yeah i mean that's that's it yeah for the most part and the right was like the rest of the yeah store. the right was uh jewelry i think you had uh your clothes and all that good stuff yeah okay that was, was a, that was a tough one because it's been a long time, and they changed it a little bit too before it closed. They did. Um, yeah. Where's the cornbread to go? Oh, that what? The cornbread to go? Huh? Is that is that a store? I yeah, I'm not familiar. So with that what one. we're talking about, Joy, is that I have a picture perfect memory. If you name a restaurant, a store, or anything like that, I can walk you through it. I can tell you exactly where everything is. He'll remember is. the layout, where yeah. like the main place. But the reason are why that's important is because during my CPL class, we talk about um, we talk about your like situational awareness and in spaces. And one of the things that I always bring up is like, I'll ask people how many stop signs did you pass on the way here, or how many stoplights, and they all get all screwed up in their head. I'm like, well, you don't don't even try to think about it because you won't <laughs> remember. I can probably remember off the top of my head, but most people can't. And uh, and so I say, how many did you pass? And then they all sit there and get off conundrum. And I'm like, don't don't even think about it. You don't know. But I said, I bet you stopped at it. And I bet you if it was a, it was a yellow light, you ran through it faster. And if it was, you know, so I kind of get them on that. And they're like, oh, you know what? You don't even think about that. Because it's mm -hmm. like with situational awareness is things that you don't recognize. You recognize, but you yeah. recognize it. And you do what you need to do when you see it. Yeah. And so one of those one of those situational awarenesses that I have the ability to do is kind of snapshots of buildings I'm in. And why is that important? Because you don't have time to think when shit hits the fan in most cases. So you need to have like an understanding of the spaces you're in on all, mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. And most people don't. And so I have this special skill that I do for some reason. I, I stupid, but like an exit of a building, you should this always know cool. where the back, back room is because the main exit may be full of fire or it could be where they're mm. shooting at from you know what i'm saying Do you know exits are probably out? the only thing that's something that i was taught always like kind of growing up and even now is that's about all i can really like handle because i'm not where do you think the exit would be at kroger's and south south kroger's in uh, south side yeah where would you hit where would you hit an exit at like if you're coming the front door right there yeah. you're okay right you come in the front door and you get right about where the produce is and somebody starts shooting from the front doors. All the front doors are locked up. Where would you go? Oh, the only other exit I know of is through the pharmacy. Mm, nah, shoot, they're shooting up front. You got to go somewhere else. What's an obvious like blanket place you could just know? Like, okay, if I'm in a place like that, they're going to have a back door here. The, um, what should we call it? Deli side, butcher. deli side. Yeah. No, that's not no. no butcher. You said, yeah, like yeah, the butcher. butcher. Yeah, because you ain't never seen them bring a raw cow through the. Front, no, have they you? have to have a loading dock back there or something like that. Well, that's why butcher <laughs> that's deli. Yeah. They've never brought a raw cow nah. through the front. Like, oh <laughs> shit! But you know that they slice that meat back there. They do. Yeah. yeah so you know yeah. that you ain't never seen an unsliced that's piece true. of meat coming. So they in the gotta front. bring it in from somewhere. It's gotta be somewhere in the back, yeah. right? So those are like those little conscious decisions you make to think about. Like, ah. oh, I never thought about that, but now. You have thought about it. You'll probably never forget it. Yeah. And that's why it's so important for them to have like the exit signs and those are like requirements. Loading docks. Yeah, Rob. There it yeah, is. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to the left wall past the. Oh, bathroom. Christy. So, Christy, absolutely. Count your door frames and exits in every mm. place, full of fire and getting low. It always uh, necessary to know. So, that's another tactic of a fire department is like you got to count your doors you run, run past so that you mm. know, like, if you get stuck, you know how far you are away from the front door but in most cases if you're in there on a hose then you're you're on the hose right That's you're true. kind of straddled to the hose but if you're in there doing search and you don't have a hose mm, then you gotta you gotta do what she just said kind of get your way back out of there that just that sounds terrifying you know what's even worse though this is this is a story i'll tell you guys about fire my very first fire going to i don't think i've ever told y'all this right my very first fire was in mill pond village i believe it was uh the mobile home park on willoughby road right there in hope like right about to be in hope mm. it was right there it was like a beautiful day it was probably like july or something like that and i was it's probably like midday three o'clock or something like that and we pull out uh we got the tone we get on the rig i'm on engine four which is the one off of miller and we pull out of the station and immediately as soon as you pull out of the station you can see this big plume of black smoke in the air mm. 
And I'm like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, this is what you wait for. I've been in the stations maybe six months. So I was, here. yeah, I was all excited. Like, oh hell yeah. You know, but it was like reality set in like, oh shit. And so anyways, we're, we're riding, I'm getting all my gear on and stuff. Right. Um, you know, getting tied up to my, my SCBA and everything, getting locked in. And, uh, we get there. So like the whole way there, we're just seeing this smoke, just poof, it's billowing, billowing. And I'm just thinking like, cause I know it's in a trailer park, but trailer parks, they're, they're, they're really small. Like the trailers are really small. Like, why is it this bad? Like the smoke was super black. Um, and so anyways, we pull up to the front. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Okay. We pull up to the front. I'm the, I'm the new kid on the, on the rig. The fire's on my side. Uh, I get out the rig. The captain's yelling at me. It was Captain Martinez. I'll never forget that. Real cool cat. Like, he just kind of laid back. Heavier set guy. So, he kind of, he kind of walks on his heels. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, you know what I'm talking about? He's just kind of, got a yes. flat back and he, like, walks on his heels and shit. And he comes out, he's like, he's like, uh, Lynn, get the, get the three, two and a half. Or, I know what he say. Inch and three quarter. Get the inch and three quarter. So I was like, all right, cool. I snatched the inch three quarter off, get to the door. Um, and it's just me and him at the door. Engineers getting the rig going. And there's fire billowing off this door. Like, I'm thinking like, okay, we're about to hit it from the yard because that's way too much fire to go in. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so what you want me to do, Cap? Like, you want me to spread the through grass. the window? He's like, nah, we going in, chief. <laughs> oh, shit. So anyways, I strap my mask on. I get my SCB on, turn it on. And he's like, all right, let's go. He like opens the door, kind of kicks it a little bit to kind of open it out. Flames flow out the door. Mm -hmm. We crawl in under him and he's like yelling at me like, do you see, you know, do you see it? It's right there to the left. Like spray it, spray it. It's right to the left. And I'm like, I'm opening this thing up and I'm spraying. I'm like, I don't see it, Cap. I don't see it. He's like, spray it right over there. No, no, no. More to the left, more to the left. And he's telling me this, right? And I'm like, Cap, I can't see it. He's like, damn it. Open your eyes. And I opened my eyes. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> it was right there. So, <laughs> so, like, this is the realest story. I'm telling, like, the whole time, as soon as we walked through the door, like, you guys can't see my eyes. I did this. Like, as soon as we walked in. So, I'm like, I'm like looking around. I'm like, I can't see it, Cap. Where's it? He's like, it's right there to your left. So I go to my left. He's like, spray up there. So, I'm just like, I'm just listening to his voice. And I'm just kind of putting <laughs> I'm like, so spray up. He wants me to spray up. So I do my little TZO. <laughs> you know, he's like, no, you don't see it's right there. I'm like, Cap, I can't see. He's like, oh open your damn eyes. And I open my eyes. I'm like, oh, there it is right there. I'm hitting it. But it was just <laughs> the funny thing. <laughs> the funny thing about that is like, that's what happens in situations that we're talking like, about. Instinctually. I but didn't he knew to tell you to open your eyes. Open your eyes. He was like, just open your damn eyes. It's like, oh, shit. But the point I'm making is. All of my understanding oh, of the okay. world went out the door when I kicked that door and went in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if I didn't train for that stuff, if I wasn't paying oh attention, gosh. like, I, you just go to, you go to what you know. Like, you fall back on whatever training is you have. And yeah. at the time, cool. I, that was my first time in a fire, so I didn't know what it was supposed to look like. Oh. Every time I had been in anything prior, it had been completely blacked out in smoke. Like, you couldn't mm. see anything, right? And so, we had been in a... um uh, flashover chamber which they tell you keep your eyes like look like, you can see the fire billowing up and it kind of flows over your head and then it, you know you squirt a little bit to kind of knock it back down so that was that that's the la that's the first and only time i've been in a fire inside of a inside of a contained in area. a controlled situation yeah. with instruction yeah but this like... was the first time i've been in a fire that wasn't controlled and this thing could do whatever it was going to do mm. and so i just instinctively like this is about to hurt shut my eyes you know what i'm saying <laughs> like this is gonna hurt let me <laughs> shut my <laughs> eyes and get in here you know what i mean but that was funny man afterwards oh i was God. like i was like that was hilarious like, <laughs> open then, your like... damn eyes me and me and Captain Captain Martinez, like every fire I had been on for the most part was with him. It was crazy. We pulled up again out there in that, that direction and there was three semis on fire and it was hot, hot, mm. super hot. Tires were exploding. It was sweet. I remember that that first fire. I distinctly remember that you came home and smelled exactly like a very yeah. intense campfire. Yeah. And I, I mean, it took days to like, I mean, it was just embedded deeply yeah. no, that was, was when you sweet. stopped bringing your clothes home yeah yeah like, i didn't really yeah you, yeah that's one of those things that you get told in training and everything how dangerous it is those those uh vapors and all of that stuff on mm. you is but you know i think i was probably in the department three or four years before i took it serious that's a that is i mean that's a crazy story but it, that is funny because i didn't expect that i thought you were gonna say like i was 
it, it looked different than what I thought it was or whatever. No, it looked like the back of my eyes. I was like, I don't see shit. Cap, I don't see nothing. I'm just like walking past. Like, Where's Cap? Where's it at, Cap? With your eyes closed. Oh, where's it at? The open eyes. Well, oh, shit. Oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> Stupid man, stupid. Oh my, I love. You know what's so story, what's so cool though, about you know so what's so true. cool about Captain Martinez? He never told nobody that story. <laughs> he could have went back to the station like new kids, are idiot. <laughs> he walked in there, couldn't see nothing. I tell him open his damn eyes. He's it's, squirting on the floor. That's a good captain. He never though. told nobody. He, that. It probably wasn't the first or last time that was gonna happen. That's why he knew to tell you open your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, He's man. probably looking me dead in my face like, are you serious? Open your damn <laughs> eyes, kid. But, oh, shit. There He's he is. watching you the whole time. Like, yeah. Gonna open man, firefighting boy. No, but Crazy. so the, the really why, the reason I told that story is because also I went to Walter French fire when they had that. I came mm. in on overtime and uh, I was with a crew that walked through. We went through the uh, gym. And at the time, I didn't know the layout of that building. This is why you must know. And I went to Walter French for a little while, but I just didn't know the layout of the building. Um, And so we walked, we came into a space. It was like a middle hallway. And they walked us kind of through the the gym that I didn't know I was in was a gym, right? So we were like paw on the wall, right? And then we got through to what was where the fire was. And it was in a, it was in a swimming pool. And Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that that was a swimming pool either that the fire was in. So ultimately what the whole long story short is, as the smoke started to clear, we recognized that we were in a gymnasium and we were mm. pawing and we were pawing the wall in a gymnasium. And the point I'm making is that if we had got off of that wall, I don't know that we would have ever made it back on the wall. And it wasn't a lot of fire. It was just a lot of smoke, which is another thing that if you if you take the smoke out, there's no real danger mm. in some of those fires like that. Right. But uh we were pawing the wall and I just remember as we were done and we were cleaning up and everything and like, in like uh, ventilating, I remember thinking like, Oh shit, we was in a gymnasium and I turned and it was like, think about how big a gym exactly. is. Exactly. Think about I was getting on to the this, middle of that. Yeah. Post-mark. I was on this wall thinking that I'm in a hallway oh and it God. was a whole ass gym over here that anything could have been happening how in easy and you couldn't see you, none of it. That's if you do, if you don't listen to your training, you forget right. your training, you do something outside of your training, right. you get far off. That's, that's one how... thing I will say, yo, LFD got some of the best at fighting fire, man. Like, mm. We got some cold firefighters, yo, that's when it how... comes to that part. But anyways, it was reminiscent. Yeah. Um, but anyways, like that, that what, what Christy was talking about, like that's just that situation, awareness, knowing where you are, uh, you know, knowing what to do when your brain turns to mush, when some shit hits the fan, you, know, you ain't got time to be thinking about too much. You no, you know, it's funny because it's one of those situations like, um, my sister long, this was a long time ago, but she, and this happened out in East Lansing, you know, and she, she talks about this sometimes and I, we were just talking about it. There was a shooting out in East Lansing at like a, a frat party or something like that. I can't Damn, remember what happened. When? Recent? 15, no, oh, we're talking oh, when she oh. was in her, you know, oh, college age years. You. But, um, you know, altercation happened or whatever, and people were kind of leaving, and somebody decided to shoot back at the party, and she was with a friend that wasn't involved in that. And I think his girlfriend or whatever had left or already or whatever. He got hit, and she, she's like, I had, we don't know nothing about nothing at that time. Like, You know, but she had watched TV and like movies or whatever, and she knew well enough to stick her finger in the wound Mm. and like keep him for until they got there. And he, I mean, there was blood everywhere, but like that likely probably they said helped save his life. Come here, I've seen this on Law and Order. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) But she, you know, what a traumatizing thing. But like you said, though, what do you always say? The main thing is not Not to, to panic. It's hard to do though. She's like, no, I was panicking, but I just, she's like, I was panicking inside, but like, I knew we, you know, we couldn't just like, he was bleeding so much and I knew you had to like put pressure on the wound. So that's just what we did. So it's like two things are going to happen. You're going to panic, lose your shit and be completely useless. Or you can still panic, feel your feels, but like figure out what you could do in that in, in the, the moment. As long as it ain't paralyzing panic. Yeah. Paralyzing panic makes it hard to do anything. Or Every, everything feels like you're about to fall off a ledge. Or frantic like frantic erratic loud panic that is making things harder for everyone else because i've been in situations with that where i've had to be like please i calm down like or go over there or something you're you know like i that happened with (laughs) one of my little cousins she cracked her head open 
And her mom freaking out. And I literally like snatched her up and I put her in the bathroom and shut the door. And I'm like, when you just said cracked your head open, I just thought about it's really crazy. That doesn't happen more often. With kids? Just or period. Just, I know. I just seen a video the other day. A kid, How a guy was like skateboarding oh. and fell down. And the first thing he did was shit whip his head on the ground. And he grabbed it immediately. Like, oh, it's just the, the fact that that doesn't mm. happen more often is crazy to me. Yeah, that happened. It's a kid. She was riding a bike. and, and That's why bike. I wear my helmet. I don't play. Me too. But yeah. Because I've seen scary. too many accidents where people had popped open like How that. How many motorcycles have we seen just in the last week? Yeah, with people not wearing Helmet, helmets, yeah, and 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 driving Erratic. erratically. Yo, there was this guy on, on the Lodge Freeway in Detroit doing like eighty-five miles an hour with no helmet on, he pass. whipping past cars with on a trike <laughs> on a trike. Now, if you don't know the difference between a trike people and a motorcycle, safer. like a motorcycle wants to stay upright and keep moving forward because it's two it's wheels. Balance, it's like yeah. the balance of it; it wants to stay up. A trike will get lopsided quickly on you, like mm. in turn and flip. That's why those like three wheelers damn near got outlawed. Three wheelers to break more necks than than I don't know what. It just looks to me like it wants to fishtail. It, it reminds like, it just yeah you're it right. reminds me of a situation where like, like, he's with dragging the semis, the wheel. you got a semi and the wind's catching it in the back and mm. it's kind of doing this. That's what those remind me of, except way more dangerous because they're smaller people. I mean I just and the way he went past past us, the sound it made, I was like, he's going way too fast. But the so that's another oh, thing. Oh shit! Like, Did you see Justin Timberlake pleaded guilty to drunk driving? That's he should. Wasn't there like video? I thought it wasn't. I thought he didn't though. That yeah. he was like saying it was like something else, like he had pills or something, like he had just some interaction. I didn't think it was. I didn't think I he th- was saying it. That's huh. what it was. Oh, I he pled guilty to a lesser charge of driving while impaired. Oh, then it might have been pills. He was impaired. <laughs> So wow. something was up with him. That was a hot mess. That whole situation. Like people were really upset and <laughs> like his behavior. So what's it, what's he going to get? What's what's the he's got to do community service. Yeah. OK, community service. Pay a five hundred dollar fine. Make a public safety announcement after pleading guilty. Oh, that's his community service. A public safety announcement. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Isn't that's that gonna nice? He's going to have to do a YouTube sorry video. I apologize for all of my sit down doings. on the couch with like the background. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All of, all of our like millennial folks have. Oh my God. Them. How do we miss this? We went to the Usher concert last night. Can I just tell you Man. how, just how full and loved my millennial heart felt? In that entire atmosphere. You know, what we realized going to that was that our, all of our club nights had usher in it. oh my yeah. god <laughs> loving this club that one yeah. loving this club uh what else uh, um, um nice and slow yo yo yeah no. yeah uh, like climax it did the, the <laughs> we were in there <laughs> yo acting fool that shit like, crazy that was, yo usher guy like yo it, that was like it damn near yeah that was deep yo it was that was deep i, I had felt, us on a whole I felt, journey you know what's so crazy though i felt super old not because he's old but just because i was thinking like them days are so far gone so far away like, remember i found the doing, pictures yeah we ain't doing none of that none no of- yeah send me some of them pictures <laughs> let me see <laughs> Like we ain't doing none. Of that. I was thinking, like, man, would well, it be nice to reminisce on some Usher in the club type stuff? Like, I want to make love in this club. No, I we what we just said that shit so far away, so far away. Wow, and when's the course, last time we was in a club that loud? For instance, let me tell you what I'm saying. The whole like night last night, I had earplugs in. That's how old my ass is getting. <laughs> I can't do a concert without. I can't raw dog a concert no more without having my earplugs in. <laughs> I was like panicking when we got there because I was like, I forgot my AirPods. Let I me take my... you. Yeah, look at Big Rob. Oh, Get in there, Big God. Smooth. Listen. <laughs> Y'all. Yeah. I had to yeah. try to find the one. Because what when he came out, remember I said when he came out, I was like, this is us around that era. Oh, yeah. 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 It was 2019. Two, oh, yeah. 2010, 11. Yeah. It was somewhere around there. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, we went to the Usher concert. It was dope, yo. If you didn't, so it's tonight. Y'all missed it if you didn't go today. But uh, Usher concert, it was like two hours of nonstop. 
like consistent dancing, dancing skating skating yeah they oh brought out gosh. big sean it yes they brought constant. out big sean that was that i was wondering who he was gonna bring out it was dope, it was dope. and it was from the it was from the gate it wasn't no it wasn't no openers or nothing it was like straight from it was like it started about 45 minutes later than they said but that's cool it gave you time to get in get settled in and everything but um it was right from the bell man to the end it was dope yo. non-stop and it was just so like um i don't know it was just exciting yeah. and it was like great to reminisce and just to think about because you know music will take you on a journey you hear a song you remember oh i remember this i remember hearing it here or whatever the case may be it was just it was it was awesome um what else uh we went to the lions game last week and watched the overtime to beat the la rams that was dope it was a dope scenario Although I will say, watch how you buy, buy your tickets because <laughs> the tickets that we bought were on the lower bowl, but they were the very last row of the lower bowl, which meant you had this like overhang of the second level over top of you. And it was like in a walkway. So one thing I learned, I'm just give y'all this little information. I like I like feeding game to people. If you buy an aisle seat in any place that you expect it to be dark, it's going to be lit up and it's not yep. going to feel right. So just be mindful of that because we were at the back of this aisle we were at the back of the lower bowl like the very last row in the lower bowl at the yep. at the fourth field and behind you is a walkway so that walkway has to be lit it's not like back in the day where the usher would like light the steps for you no all walkways are lit no matter what if they yep. black out the whole building and it's supposed to be that's an environment be that space is going to be lit up yep. so be mindful of that on top of that fact um excuse me on top of that fact again that overhang so I would say that if you're going to go to the forward field and want to sit in a lower bowl, you're almost better to go to the next row up instead mm, of sitting mm-hmm. in the lower bowl if you can get lower lower row seats. But um, if you're going to sit in a lower bowl, you need to sit like 30 rows and under. If you go higher than that, you're going to have that overhang over you. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it's yeah. that bad, but it wasn't. It was bad. So we got tickets for Tampa this weekend, and I definitely got lower bowl like, I think we're 15 or 16. And it was a night game, wasn't it? It was. It was a a Sunday night game. Yeah. So there was a lot of moments where they were turning everything off and, you know, they were trying to vibe with like the, Oh, it was dope. When you sat down, they gave you this little bracelet. If you guys watched the game, you probably seen like all the lights around. They gave you this little bracelet that played along with like the music and stuff. So so every time they played music, they would light them up. Or like if there was a big game, big point in the game where, you know, a touchdown or something, they would light them up and everybody could put their arms and in So you air. could see the whole stadium just, like, yeah, vibe dope. into it. I was it was just... dope. Trick Trick came out. If y'all don't know who Trick Trick is, Detroit rapper, but Trick Trick came out and uh, did his song. Det- I don't know what the song is called, but it's like that. I didn't know. That song. Anyways, they did that song, and then uh, Eminem came out. Not came out, but was on the video. It was sweet, man. It was good. It was good. It was, it was, cool. it was a good time. Tickets was way too expensive, but oh, another thing for some game. I'm giving y'all some game here. <laughs> a guy gave me this game. Ticket IQ. Ticket IQ is an app. All your tickets with no fees, so you get all the tickets you want, no fees, and it's real. And I checked it out, and I bought tickets. So I bought the Usher tickets through here. And I bought uh, the Tampa tickets this weekend through here. No fees. So if you know, if you get on StubHub and buy stuff, StubHub is going to be, um, StubHub is going to be about a third of the price is going to go to the fees. Crazy. So it's going to be like, if your ticket is $200, your fee is going to be about 75, 80 bucks. Yeah. And we, so StubHub, we, we decided to buy, you know, try to buy a parking pass on there to park, to go to the concert or whatever. And it's a map. So you're like, you know, I, I can only walk so far. You pick it based on the map and it's like, okay, it gives you the address. I tell them the address. We're like navigating there. I'm waiting for the ticket to get it. Ticket finally comes. Address is different on the parking pass and mm-hmm. it's farther. Yeah. Totally different lot. Like, yeah. Oh, it was crazy. oh, this is that. So this is the Usher era, early Usher era. If y'all want to see Mike and I shenanigans. Oh, look at us over there. <laughs> That is like if you This want... must be like this is like that club in East Lansing, mm-hmm. I believe. Yep, with the sticky floor. Yep. This is that club in East Lansing. Yep, we are in that back room. Dang, look at us. I was uh. skinny as hell. <laughs> Your boy was like 145 and drunk as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's on the way, because we always had to vibe on the way there. 
Oh, yeah. Let me see what this is. Oh, yeah. I think we got a cab. That was when cabs were a thing. Yeah. That was we used to get the a van. Bus, the bus cab. Yeah, yeah, the bus cabs, the big cabs. Yeah. Wow. We that's what the Usher concert does for folks of our Those generation. are some lame ass pictures. We got some way better. Oh, I pictures have a ton. Now. You go down my yeah. thirty, what my thirty third? No, my thirtieth birthday. Yeah, my thirty. But I was saying was cool. that era. Those are very. That's like 2010, 11 era, like yeah. somewhere in there. But no, what we've probably got um, pictures of like every era of of our life. Our we, last <laughs> era was the coldest though when we lived in the outfield. That was the dopest. <sighs> I think that was the dopest party scene we ever had. That we was, did. That was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. I haven't drank in a year or two. September 25th, Long I believe, would be the last that. time I had a drink. Not that I have a problem or anything. I just decided I didn't want it in my life anymore. Have you ever seen that comedian talking about how he don't drink? And he's like, not for a reason. But you, you have to say that? that. You do have but to say But he was that. like, why do people get like that? Because people assume that if you don't drink, you they, got a problem. He was like, they're it. like, oh my gosh, did you have a problem? Did you hurt your that's wife? That's exactly how that is. And he's exactly like, but if I came in here and was like, I don't smoke. I weed. don't drink water ever. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. what? No, 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 no. They wouldn't say. Okay. No, that's literally what he said. He, yeah. and he's like, because apparently you have to know why I don't drink poison. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's what he's like. He's yeah. like, so you have to know why I don't drink poison. I went through okay. that in high school. Like, I don't smoke weed. Like, what? You don't smoke weed? No, I don't smoke weed. Oh, that was like during the Snoop Dogg. Everybody smoked yeah. weed days. I can remember when everybody was like found L's like you know blunt that was the shit. thing oh my god it was terrible I know that was a hard horrible time to live through like uh, why don't you like I told you my first weed story my first getting high story that's why I don't smoke weed it was a bad experience it. for him oh that's dope Rob says my answer is always pews and brews don't mix pews and brews don't mix that's that's yeah. a good that's man that's legit I mean I like lose, beer I like know. beer I like I like the buzz that a nice little beer gets you, but it's like, you know, for me, it just health wise, as you get older, I don't know how to explain it to you, but like you automatically have an engine light on when you turn 40. And then you as you get light, older, older like your windshield wiper light goes <laughs> off and then your transmission light goes off and you got the one light that can't nobody tell you was what it is. The ABS light. I just don't. All my lights been been on and off like for too long drinking and stuff. I just. I can't do it no more. I can't do the hangovers, to be honest with you. Like, the hangovers are the worst, yo. They last days. You get anxiety where, like, you just, like, my heart's pounding weird. Like, it's just, I, I can remember drinking, like, a fifth of Patron to myself with beer and be okay in the morning. Mm. Not 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 be okay, but, like, not but have all that. functioning. Yeah, not but have all die? that shit. Nope, that's it. I could drink some sugar water and, like. Eat Pickle something, juice. And be, yeah, sleep through, and I'd be good. Get, now, get you some Subway. Oh my God, yo. If I drink that much, I'll, first of all, I'm puking everywhere. And then the next mm. day, probably the next three or four days, I, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be out of it bad. And so it's real, yo. Like getting older, it's um, different. Getting older, definitely. I'm starting to recognize what it feels like. It's like, like even yesterday, can't. we were sitting up at that, uh, at the uh, Usher concert standing. And I'm like, yo, I'm standing here watching the Gusher concert. This dude is down here doing backflips, handstands. <laughs> he been running around this singing. stage and singing for the last two hours. And my knees are <laughs> killing me. Yo, what? Yo, well, I told him we got up there to look for our seats. And I was like, I can't do that. Too oh, my time. God. I forgot about that seat. part. Wait a minute. No, you can't over and just walk over that. Yo, don't never go to the nosebleeds at Little Seas <laughs> Arena. It's that funny. shit is like hanging off the uh, what's the what's the the top thrill dragster? It, it was like the Millennium Force if you've ever sat on there. You know when they take you oh up my and you're God. sitting like that. That shit was testing my fear of heights in there. Like I I'm gotta, serious. I sat up there for a second and I was like, "My, you got okay you feel like you're gonna fall forward and down." Please tell me somebody's been in the Little Seas Arena up top, yo. It's crazy. It's and, and it's like on. literally you're on this edge like this. So hold on. When you when you get so the first round of steps are like normal steps, right? So you're like, oh, when you like you make that bad. then you make that corner to go up and the steps are like <laughs> You got to use your hands to <laughs> climb like a up. <laughs> it's like a ladder, though. <laughs> Holy shit. How far are we up? My I remember eyes were burning. Yeah, I, I remember like, when we turned the corner and I looked up, I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that right there." Is you really feel like you 200 feet in the air. I was like yo. holding his back like. Yeah, it's crazy, but it, it's crazy. Then we yo. went and got some food because we hadn't eaten, of course. So we went and got some food and we were down there and I was thinking like, 
you know, I can get sketchy with Carrie and stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, am I going to be okay? Yo, like, so many people don't I need even think about that shit. I like, remember <laughs> the one, the one lady, when she would start walking up the young white lady, the one young white girl with the other, with the other dude, the white dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm Tall. saying that because there wasn't a whole lot of white folks there. So you remember. Yes. But I anyways, remember exactly. they uh, in front of she us. was like, she seen it. She was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if she I could did. do it. She said, and she started laughing because she was like, I, she literally stopped like her body just and she, I was like, because it's that steep. I said, take it slow, use the railing. She was like, yes, and like instantly grabbed the railing. But it was, it was, yeah, it was that steep. It made your body feel like you were doing this. Yeah, you bit felt like you was going to fall forward. So you could kind of like lock yourself back. I looked at Mike and I was like, do they allow drinking in here? He's like, yeah, I was yes. thinking that too. Somebody going to fuck themselves up trying to climb up or down that drunk. Oh, and then people had heels on because you know people dress cute for the concerts. I love looking at everybody's outfits. Not no, I wore tennis shoes. Yeah, absolutely did. Wore Nikes. <laughs> and then they had this big box of chicken, yo, that was ridiculous. <laughs> they gave you like the guy eight, talked us into eight it. Eight pieces of chicken. It was this Tyson long, chicken this strips. big chicken strips, yo. It was crazy. I ate two. I saw. I knew I saw. I, I needed. Oh, so I only needed two. Well, we were gonna get the. Regular two, boxes. you get two with fries, which two, is a perfect right? size. And your ass got greedy. It was like, well, we might as well get the eight. I'll eat. Well, that's not exactly how it happened. The worker was like, you guys sure you don't want the big box? It's the same price, I'm but sure. you know. Nope. <laughs> you just giving me some shit I'm going to have to stick under my seat or try to figure out a way to throw and it away. And I'm like, sure. I'm thinking. I'm going to have to walk down this ladder and throw it away. So why I said yes is because I wasn't convinced that two was going to be enough for him. I was like, he probably is going to need at least three because I'm thinking like, stadium no. chicken strips or whatever they, were they brought this box arms. out first of all the box was this tall in this wide it was heavy and those chicken yeah it was like my it's hand the size of a toddler's looked arm. like that i was like oh my gosh these are big big ten and then the whole bottom of it was filled with fries and we don't even eat like that so <laughs> so i get up here my knees get to hurting i was just thinking like damn like i'm so out of shape though that my knees hurt from just standing I have been but that's not really just it. Like I'm 43 now, <laughs> and my knees hurt. They, I can remember people saying that, like, "Man, my knees be killing me." Man, I'm like, "What?" My dad, he's 47, right? My knees is killing. Man, I didn't understand it. Now like, I do. What does that even mean? Everything like, hurts when you wake up in the morning. It all like you feel like you played a game of football yesterday just from laying down and sleeping. And the whole like what it injury, must be like, like to be young and jump out of bed and don't have no aches and pains or not like don't stand up too tall or like and good posture and like sneeze pass or, like, out yeah or like sneeze or, or or cough too quick and you weren't expecting it because Yo, you will literally pull something. I stretch. Like, you gotta be careful how you stretch. It feels so good to. I'm about to do one right now. No, don't do it too far. But I got. I know once I get to that point, I gotta slow down. I can't just go all the way into that mud. And then you do like this, mm -mm. but you got to watch it because as soon as you arch that back a little bit, it feel like it might pop. I don't never remember that. I remember stretching so hard, like I could put every ounce of my muscle into stretching. Yes. What changes? Would... What changes? We get less flexible. I think that's a big one. Mikey lose... always says that. My son always says, you yes. ain't getting old. You just out of shape and you yes, don't stretch. And you don't stretch. He literally, he got so real with us one day. He was like, y'all not old. He was like, you're just out of shape and don't stretch. Look at <laughs> <laughs> Rob yeah. said I sit on the end of the bed and let my body warm up before I get the movie. <laughs> my, my came in I was it this thing, morning or yeah. he's like, You all right? I was like, I don't know. I, I don't usually know. I usually warm mine up on the I'm laying bed and warm it up. I get to stretch a little bit, get all I the crackles and pops bed. out. It's just yeah. sometimes you have to sneeze strategically sometimes, not yes. to mess yourself up. You ain't That's lying. A, I'll hold my like if i know it's coming and it's gonna be i'll hold my neck yo lamar's like, today he sneezed twice and didn't <laughs> let it out i'm like bro he's better he younger than us though he like 35 he maybe 30 yeah, you could do that it. i can't do that i can't hold a sneeze like that if i hold it and it don't come out my nose it's gonna come out somewhere else like my armpit or like i'm a i'm a bust a kidney I'm open gonna, or something that that air here. going somewhere you gotta let it out no that that is true just like turn to the side and, and just let it loose Hell yeah. but also don't let it loose too aggressive like said you have to aggressive. it's got to be strategic you gotta respect it you do you gotta you but gotta again i'm not sneeze. gonna lie it is a lot of it we're tight like you your flexibility goes if you don't work on it when you're young you're natural think about that when you're a kid you know, you can put your legs behind your head and walk on your hands. No, I do couldn't. Swim. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Shut up. I don't know what. No. No. Who the f 
Yeah, legs behind my head. Walk like a crab. <laughs> what the fuck? Damn. Anyway. Y'all East Side kids. <laughs> creative as hell. <laughs> Y'all creative, Don't do yo. me. I was never doing none of that shit. I can guarantee you there's a whole lot of people that used to do that. I do couldn't splits, put my legs behind my head. Do never. Do handstands up on the wall. Walk on your hands. I couldn't do none when of that. When you're a never. kid. <laughs> never. So then you just ain't never been flexible. I ain't been that stretching flexible. When no. you're a kid, though, you are a lot more flexible. When you're a teenager or whatever, you start losing some of that flexibility as you get older if you don't work on it. Yeah. You don't have to work on it when you're younger. But yeah. now, like, <laughs> what did you do to mess your back up? I went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up like this. Yeah. I woke up like this. It's new meaning. Like, I woke up like right. this. Yeah. I will wake up sometimes and have to think, like, Mike, what kind of kid were you? Pains, like, mm. I wasn't the kind of kid that could put my legs behind my, neck, <laughs> my head. That's for sure. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I used to I couldn't do my, none of that shit. Was that just me? Come on, y'all. Hands on your head and walk on your on your hands. I play sports like, though, yo. And sports me and my sister don't used make, to you race. can't be that flexible playing sports because you got you constantly training your muscle. That's true. To be tight. That's probably and why strong. Mikey wasn't very flexible. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, do none of that shit. And walk on my hands. That's the kind of kid I was. I was an East Side kid. I ain't gonna lie. I was out there. In the woods, climbing yeah, trees, no, walking on my hands, no, jumping off that. ramps. That was the kind I of kid. I did that type of stuff, but oh, <laughs> oh ask me, ask Erica. <laughs> yeah, what kind of kid was you? That don't sound like no shit we was doing. <laughs> we weren't able to. I wouldn't say we wouldn't want to. I might have oh. seen some kids doing that and be like, dang, that looks fun. That's funny. I feel like I was I can't the, even sit with my legs crossed. Like I was the kid right that now. Mike was over there, like Yeah, that's weird. Like there was yeah, South Side kid. That's right, Shamar. <laughs> we side didn't kid. do none of that type of stuff. That's East Side behavior. That's definitely East Side behavior. East Side kid and East Side, side behavior. You know what uh, East Siders do? And young adult. When we was kids, now I can't say for today, but East Side kids took advantage of all the things around them. Absolutely. Even just being able to put their legs behind their That's head. That's right. Did you, I mean, we we on the South Side. We do. We rode bikes. We clicked up road bikes. We went to like the neighborhood candy stores. We played video okay. games. Okay. Yeah, hungry house. You know what I mean. Oh. We went to store stores. Like I remember going to Holden Reed to Michigan look at Avenue like PX store, all of that. Yeah. We far. did that. Too far. The record store, the record lounge. But that's because y'all got the MLK corridor. You had Logan Square and yes. all that. Yes. Like if you were an East Side kid where I was, Frandor was too far. Right. So like if it wasn't on Michigan Avenue and KZU. Like you know another it. thing we did a lot of? Get that hit by it. cars. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, I got hit by a car twice, twice. when I was a kid. That was like twice. I got hit twice. And then another thing, and I don't remember none of it either. Both times. I hit. I actually hit a car once in Al Sarah Forest parking lot. I was riding through the parking lot, and I was beating my my cousin, my cousin Terry, Mike. And, uh, and I turned around to talk junk, and that's the last thing I remember until mm. I woke up. I broke my tooth, and... Uh, my my uh my lip, cut my lip open and stuff, and I ran into the side of a car and I ran into the car twice. And now I think about it, I was running Isn't across the street. I was running across the street on Cavanaugh, and a car came through, on Cavanaugh past well Mary Avenue is what it is, blazing through past MLK and Mary Avenue, and it hit me with its uh with its uh mirror. I didn't wow. see it. I didn't see it coming at all. So dangerous. I would have been, been smoked had I been like a half a second earlier. I was just going to say that could have been so bad. That's another one I don't remember. I just woke up and couldn't breathe. Oh, my God. Like, do you notice something missing from both of these stories? What? There's no hospital involvement. Like, no, 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 no. There was. Oh, okay. Both of those, yeah, oh, sorry, okay. I, I was like, Yeah, Jesus. I woke up on the street and couldn't breathe. And then people and somebody started, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, please <laughs> lie. I was crying and stuff. And then they put me in the ambulance and took me out the Wambalamps. It took me to the hospital. So my dad. I just think about being my dad back then. Like how I couldn't have been my my dad. I couldn't have been my dad. Mm. I put my dad and my mom through some hell, yo. That's the kind of kid Mike was. I even was if y'all terrible, yo. <laughs> you were a boy. I mean, like boys, little boys. All are, of it. All of that. So just else. being a boy, right? The stuff that's fun. Like, oh yeah, being a boy was meant breaking my arm, breaking my leg, getting hit by two cars, got ran over by a car when I was three. Uh, what else? Then I start going to jail. Well, so, that escalated quickly. As, all as a kid. So all that's, that's why I put my parents through. Thank God. My, my, oh, my God. I don't, know. I don't know how I made it. 
don't know how they made it. I wasn't that kind of kid. <laughs> no. I was <laughs> No, you was the type of kid that was going like I said, that's some East Side shit, playing with stuff. Yes. We would find Licking your lips till they raw. Don't that is yes, not all a East Side no. kids did it's that. Not all. It's all not true. everyone I ever seen that's just certain had chap kids lips. in general. Bullshit. They didn't sell I, I don't think they sold chapstick on the East Side real talk. That's just a kid thing. We all know that. That's uh-uh, just a kid no, thing. I know South Siders was doing that. Only yeah, the kids okay. that came from the East Side yeah, okay. moved over here and did that type of stuff. <laughs> we didn't do that. That is an unfair assessment. I can not stand even seeing it. I like why <laughs> wouldn't fair assessment. The whole outside of the lip be bad. So it's we never all. did that as a kid. I never did no, that. No, you just didn't hang around kids, but all kids do it. Trust no, me. Or no, no kid I hung out with. Okay, so you didn't hang this. around with every single kid. I don't kid. remember being a kid, kid like that. Do I could be walking around with chap lips like that. And I'm not talking about chap lips, chap face, because it was never just the it lips. It is. It's the It was the, the whole lips. face. We know. It's from licking. It was so red and irritated and just cracking. And I don't know how you living like that right now. First of all, and I know he's put no referencing lotion on you, but that wasn't me. So, like I said, not all. It wasn't okay. me. It wasn't you my siblings. It wasn't any of my friends. You may not have done that because you was a girl, too. No. But I know one I thing, I know one thing you did do that every East Side kid did. What is that? You ate popsicles and let the shit drip on your hands, and no, then picked up dirt and grass with it. Nobody did that. That's just kid. That's just yes, kid. you did. The no. sticky handed East Sider. No. Yeah. That's just a kid thing. We all. I know some kids in both sides I of our family. I bet you had Velcro shoes too. No. Yes, you no, did. That's I the East Side shit. You did. I had the same things that you like. What are you talking about? Hold on. We talking about like we Let's talking about clear. like kindergarten up to like fourth grade. Oh, kindergarten. Yeah, I remember that. You don't remember I that? I mean, kind of. I was at Willow then, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so well, I wasn't East Side Then you was at North Side, East Side. I was at, I was at Willow. Worse. I went to Willow for kindergarten. and yeah, Actually, kindergarten first and second. I yeah, went to Willow Street worse. Elementary, which my school is no longer even there. They're going to rebuild it, but yeah. I don't think I remember my fashion statements. Between what? Oh, Rob said, Rob said, I, I could never sit crisscross applesauce. I was just hungry. <laughs> 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 I know, right? <laughs> I used to have to sit like this, but I couldn't sit like that. <laughs> Hands, like hands on my leg, my knees like this. Just sit. <laughs> like, sit with your legs crossed. That was such an unfair okay. request. Like yeah. crisscross applesauce. Well, back then, what was it called? Indian style. Yeah, Why? but it's crisscross. We don't because we were so. Yo, we grew up in offensive, offensive ass offensive times. times. Like what else what? was offensive that they do? What was offensive? What oh my gosh. It? We absolutely assumed everybody's gender. Everybody was a absolutely. Mr. Mister. Yep, and just like black boy or girl. Did. Yep. I was um, seeing something on TikTok. They were showing they, like, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, what's his name? We all loved it back in the day, Mister Rogers, mm-hmm. and he was talking about boys and girls and how they can mm. only be, you can only grow up and be a dad, yes. and you're a boy, and you're a boy for all your life, and all of these things. But like, at the time, is it okay for us to just say that at the time, you're right? What's today wasn't then. Yes, because and I and we can't that, crucify our Mr. Rogers for that. I think that if Mr. Rogers was today now, alive, for sure, he would absolutely have a different message. Because when but you know that was, more, when you know better, you do better yeah. type thing. So, I so think I, just, I yeah, so I just did. There was a lot of offensive shit back in the was. day. It is it today. I remember living through some like of some of the most offensive like. Did you feel like racist, it was sexist? In the moment, yes, but I didn't recognize it what it was. I knew I didn't like the way I knew it was wrong. Like I knew what was happening was just like I don't like that, but I didn't know why. Like I did not. Some of the chants on the playground, y'all. What? Oh my gosh! Like one. I feel was, like I recognize some too, oh and I just gosh, can't think on. of them. I can't think of the words, but I just remember thinking of one. Somebody was telling me about. There's it. a lot of like, Indian one, like Native American. Yes, stuff. there was a lot of that. Um. Like engine stuff, like stuff like that. I can remember a lot of that for some reason. Yeah, there was a lot of that, but just the stuff with boy, like very racist, very like sexist. Yes, I think I remember some of that. Very like just mean, and I'm just like, how in the world? Like even teachers, teachers. Ring around the rosy. What is that? (laughs) Oh, I'm confident we grew up together. (laughs) Ring around the rosy. Oh, he's talking about that. Yeah, because Ring Around the Rosie is literally like about dying, like dying kids. Like what what are rhymes? Like it was just I don't know what the hell was wrong with a whole like section of time for us. But I look back and I'm just like, yeah. That I was mean, really yo, be honest with you, man. I don't know that I don't I don't remember feeling offended when I was a kid about anything. 
Um, it wasn't offended. You, it wouldn't be offended. In, for instance, I used to literally see myself get, get treated like differently or whatever. But I would watch black students get treated differently in front oh, of Oh, Ring Around the Rosies about burning people at the oh, stake. Oh, Jesus. I didn't know that, bro. Oh, Rob ashes, ashes. We... Ashes to ashes, we all fall down. Let me tell you. No way. Did we know that? I don't think so. Ring around the rosies about burning people at the stake. Mm -mm. I did not know that. See what I'm saying, y'all? These are the things. Ashes to ashes, we all fall down. That sounds like a scary movie now. It does. And if I ever hear that. Speaking of which. (laughs) I'm sorry. I got to change the subject for just a quick second. Um, Deliverance. We did not watch it. I'm not going to either because I'm not releasing I, no damn spirits in my house. But has anybody seen it on Netflix? Just tell yeah. me a little is bit. Is it worth it? It ain't worth it letting no demons go in the house. <laughs> <I> swear, <laughs> what type of question I, is that? Is it worth the demons? What's I mean, his name? <laughs> we ain't got to have. I'm a scary cat when it comes to movies. So like I'm that. the one because he was about to put it on and I was like, hold up. She reminded me that I'm scared like, of shit of that type of stuff. It's like, wait a minute. Now, you know, you ain't going to want to use the bathroom tonight. <laughs> like, hold on, babe. Let me put on my business out there like that. It's like, and I had to tell him about some of the stuff I had been hearing. And I'm like, I'm just saying, my mom always told us, I've never seen The Exorcist. Never. Yo, is it your mom that told me that? Probably. Yeah, I wonder where I got that at. My mom, my mom tells everyone that. But I genuinely like, believe that shit now. Like I don't watch scary shit in, in the house because it's gonna release demons. She, she, yeah, she tells everyone that, and she's not an, a religious person, person like by like specifically or over, at all. She just, she's like, we always grew up believe like don't, don't, don't create be opportunities. That shit in don't your create house. opportunities for that. For, yeah, for evil. and I'm like, okay. And for me, I was just kind of like, I oh. Don't know. Ashiki said, "Don't do it." See what? Look, tell me less. more. Say, no, what? no, no. Don't tell him more. Don't. No, just He's tell me scared. more. Like why? What's ha- what happened? <laughs> I saw the means he couldn't do it. Rob said he seen couldn't do it. Yo, what? Should we couldn't do, we, do it? Because do we have looked... to have a watch party at? We can't do it at our house though. We have to do it somewhere else. Mm. Ah, uh, bubonic plague. In so England? see, I that I think that's what I had read. What uh, that the the ring around the rosy had something to do with death. Like I knew it was death, but what? I just couldn't. Um, what you mean, like burning people at the stake who had the bubonic plague? No, not burning the stake, but just like death. Something about death. I didn't know. Yeah, it was burning death. somebody at the stake usually <laughs> results in that. There you go. You got it. But so that back to the movie though. So yo, Ashley, I've please seen, tell like, me. <laughs> Tell me some more. I need to. This is what she said here. Don't do it. Don't do it. You got to tell me more. Just type something in there. Y'all heard about the like stuff on. This is what I told him about like stuff on the set happening. And they were saying like weird stuff and people were having like nightmares and and, like. Yeah, I was like, "Ah." I believe in God, though. So I do, too. But again, like this is the thing. My family's not religious or like superstitious like that. But. She just would always say, it's something my grandma, my grandma's the one that started it. My grandma obviously talked about it, but she just said, like, you don't give opportunities for evil. Like, why? Why allow that into your home? And so I just, I don't, like I said, I've never seen The Exorcist, because why? I'm just like, mm. Erica, you're not afraid of none of that. That's not, that's why I'm explaining this, because that's not why. Even if a demon was in the house, you wouldn't be afraid. No, but I'd be afraid for y'all. Hold on a second. We got to <laughs> dig deeper into this. Wait a minute. What would you, what would you do? You're not afraid? I would bless the house. I would call my sister. Hold on a second. Wait. We have to set the stage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me that if you're at the house by yourself mm-hmm. and the water turns on in the kitchen, then you go turn it off mm-hmm. and the toilet flushes. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, we're not getting to the toilet flushes. I'm Hold on. I'm leaving. You at are? This point. Yeah. When are you leaving? Because I need to go. Find, get my sister because she's my strongest prayer warrior. Okay. We got to bless the house. Like, we got to come through and pray and bless the house. How are you leaving the house? I'm going to grab my keys and my coat and my shoes. Do you see? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's some white get- shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm going to call Hold you on. like, babe, I got to. Hold on. You doing shit other than leaving the house? Well, because first of all. What if your key's in the other room? Then I got to go get my keys. No. I'm talking about leaving the house with the door wide open. First of all, I've done this before. I know how it would go. 
I know how it's gonna go. Wait, you said you've done this before? It's, yes, like, I've done this. Me and Juan have done this before. We left Orchard Court. I remember Court. that when y'all heard the knock. Y'all, Juan told me the story. You told me the story. Mike, he yelled from upstairs in the bathroom. Did you just knock on the? I said what? Come here. I come upstairs in Orchard Court. I'm standing at the bathroom door. I've heard the story from. He's both like, <laughs> he's like, hold on a minute, bro. This give me chills right now. He's like, hold on a minute, bro. I'm about to wash my hands. He gets done washing his hands. He opens the door. He looks at me dead in my eyes like, bro, did you just scratch on the door? And we didn't have to answer the question. <laughs> I, I'm not answering that. I'm out of here. What do you mean? <laughs> did I scratch the door? Pew! Door wide open. We went all the way to Myers from Orchard Court. Walking? Door wide open, yo. So Isaac got back to the house like, yo, why is the door open, bro? Because we didn't have to ask no questions, answer Did nothing. Did y'all ever go back? So what'd you do to go back in the house? We had to go. To, we First, we went over to Papa's sister house for like a couple hours. <laughs> you got told to everybody the, you the to story. The spirits clear, clear off. They had to get out of there. Something just happened. We wasn't going to stick around I can't for tell it. a lot of my childhood stories because he'd be getting scared for real, for real. Okay, hold on. But we've lived through some stuff. No, no, no. And I so should I keep have, That's in. why. Oh. <laughs> just don't do it, bro. My sister's my sister ain't had a peaceful sleep and her light's been on for weeks. See? That's what I want. We had to sage her house because weird stuff kept happening. Oh, hell no. Yo. At this point... <laughs> I told her, let the spirits have it. I don't play with them at all. It's their house now. <laughs> Yo. See. <clears throat> What's interesting to me is that you would grab your keys and your coat before you left the house just to make sure you had everything you needed. How do you even have the time or wherewithal to think about grabbing some shit <laughs> if that happened? Like, it wouldn't take none of that. Like, I see scary movies when things happen. Like, Something blow past you and you look at it. Like all of that right there didn't happen. As soon as that blew past <laughs> me, I'm gone. We'll sort this shit out later. You the type that wants to go figure out what it was. Was it humanoid? Was I it mean, real life? Was it like a cat? I don't gotta know none of that. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna just, think the worst, and that's what we're gonna think from here on out about that scenario. So he jokes and he's like, You watch too many crime stories, blah, 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 because I'm real skeptical and like skittish about I'm like, what is he doing? What is she doing? What are they doing? Like, I'm more scared of people. Honestly, I really am. I do like. I, I say that, but I'm not because I, can, I, I feel like I can defend myself against people. I can't defend myself against the ghost. But that part is kind of irrelevant. And it's I, not because they're not going to hurt me physically. They're going to hurt me emotionally because I'm going to be scared to death. But like you, literally. What are you scared of though? But Whatever that. that is right well, there unpack, that's not normal. Unpack I, so what? I just, I don't know. What, what, are, you, what are they going to do in that moment? Scare me. Okay, so they turned the water on. They flushed the toilet. If they wanted to do something to me, they would have led with that. What are we leading up to? How you know? How you know, know that the part of they wanted to do to you is get you scared <laughs> first? They they tenderizing you real quick. They don't want to jump right to, they got to do a lot more to than the, that to the probing. Listen. They're gonna tenderize you real <laughs> no, quick. Get you ready. So I have to tell y'all this. This dynamic, should scare me right now. I, I don't even want to talk about it no more. This dynamic is very real because, like, and for some reason, Erica every just, year he wants to go to haunted houses. And I'm like, do you know? Masochist. Do you? Because I, then I got to go first, which I don't want. Who yeah, wants you got to go gotta first. Go first. And you got to be first. behind me. You got to be both places. Yes. He has one hand <laughs> I'll here. I'll crawl up inside of her like he's got this. one hand <laughs> on my back. And he just moves uh, me. And I'm just like. Yeah, I swear I, I ain't no punk. I just don't deal with ghosts and shit. It is. It's the spiritual. The guy, he doesn't like it. He doesn't deal with it. He's like, I don't want nothing That's to do That's because I'm that. working. I'm walking in God's light. And that God's well, light don't like I'm it. I'm not evil, y'all. I swear. I just. I don't know. I guess. In Hispanic families, we're just. Um, it's different. If you grew up in a Hispanic family, <laughs> you know, you know. Bet I won't need to be flexible <laughs> that day. Big baby going to be moving. <laughs> We've had situations uh, in houses where we heard some funky stuff. Who? Us. Like, uh -uh. What, what was that? You I know, ain't heard nothing happened to me since that. then. I don't even want to talk about it. Because I had to go to the basement a minute ago and grab a water. <laughs> and I hit them stairs like I was in a... <laughs> like, I don't play with that Running shit. Track. I don't play with that, yo. You would not have survived a couple of the episodes that my family had. Remember the ants I told you? Nah, that type of stuff don't get me. No? Nope. Okay. Nope. You know what gets me? What? Something staring at the me. The faucet thing that we heard that multiple times. Something staring at me. 
and I don't know what it is. And I can't see it because it's in the dark, but they can see me. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. So as a child that had night terrors, you wouldn't have survived my my childhood. Let me explain to you what you're not understanding about my fear. My fear doesn't have to do with what's there. My fear is inside of me. (laughs) And it's bringing it out. No, what I'm telling you is that I can scare the shit out of myself. Yeah. You don't have to. Like if I can... (laughs) You don't have I'm to. I'm trying to tell you. I'm already partway there. Don't nobody got to do nothing. I can think enough to give you like, oh, shit, I'm in a dark basement right now. It's about to be some shit. And I can literally run from nothing there and think that something changed. Because I talked it in my mind. It's there. And it's then so I got to walk. I got to walk away until I get into your sight like this. <laughs> It be like that sometimes. I've been like that since I was a kid. And what's so crazy I'll about it? I beat the shit it, out of somebody if I have to. What's so crazy is like you are the most fearless person I know in real life. In real life, like I I'm just, telling you, it's this it's the, it's literal the, run into a burning building. It's my body. It's my mind. Run to danger. Run mind. to. I know. I get. I get it. My I mind can it. play tricks, and I really be like, I know this shit ain't real. So as far as the what is it called, the deliverance or deliverance? Yeah. We, we won't be watching. And so another thing, too, I was like, risk versus reward. Like, why even risk that? Yeah, what when reward could there be? None. Because it's not going to scare me. Like, what? when's the last time we watched a scary movie that was genuinely scary? So let me genuinely. tell you this. Erica slept in the basement as a kid. Like, you had your room in the basement the farthest it could be away from anybody else in the house. It was the bedroom. And America? you slept in it in dark with the door shut. I did. I'm scared of you a little bit. <laughs> I'm scared of you a little bit. I don't even like the way you just said I did. That's some scary shit. Because you, you always say that. And I'm just like, Yo, I was peaceful. Who are you? It was. I didn't even have a TV in there for a long time. I was just. And you just listen to DMX. <laughs> Sitting in the dark listening to DMX texting me 304. Oh my God. We got to get off of here. Oh my gosh. Uh, so, yeah, Man. we will not be. Yeah, Ashley definitely. She cemented that for me. But So, over the last now, so. hiatus, or what should we call it, sabbatical that we took, we went to Chicago as well. And if you have not been to Chicago, I will tell you a nice hotel to stay at is the mm-hmm. Arlo. It's A R L O. It's right on Michigan Avenue. It's right across the street from uh, Millennium Park. And it's nice. It's awesome. beautiful. Great it experience. Was, it, was, it was inexpensive. And um, it was a great experience. We stayed two nights there. Uh, walked Michigan Avenue, you know, the Magnificent Mile and all of that. And went to Millennium and all of that. And seen a concert there. It was dope. Um, Birdie. Hey, Birdie. Birdie hey, was Birdie. at the, she, Birdie yes. was at the uh, Lions game. We've seen her there. Yeah, it's looking cute. Yeah. And, uh, but anyways, um, and so Millennium. Uh, park was nice and they did the uh, what was it, African it was a uh, African American dance or something like yeah, that yeah it was, it was like the st- black dance I think it was black called dance, black yeah. dance black dance experience and it had like thing. all these different, all different um, dance genres of dance companies that showed up and did all, all like um, what is it called like uh, what do they call it Ballet. Some of it was ballet. Yeah, interpretive, tap, tap, interpretive ballet. Uh, like step in. They did Chicago step. Or so it was dope. It was awesome, and it was in the park. The setting is just so cold. I really the wish vibe. we had a. So I really wish we had a Central Park like that. Like Lansing could do something like that because we love our parks and stuff in Lansing. We do. We should have a space like that. Saying, I see that the in the Capitol Loop, right back by the Ottawa buildings, the. Capitol, there's the state Ottawa State buildings. Mm-hmm. There's these two huge parking lots that there's been a lot of conversation. I don't know if there's been a lot, but there's been conversation about it being a state park, them turning that into a state park mm-hmm. because they don't necessarily need that much parking space anymore, which they absolutely don't. I think our city mm-hmm. parking garages are like like ninety five percent vacant all the time. So then get rid of that big ass monstrosity parking lot behind the Ottawa buildings. And turn it into a green space, yo. Like wildflowers, walking paths, a stage, so stage like an amphitheater. Oh my god! Because we've got these little spaces out. Like Holt's got one. Like Lansing got one. LCC hit, but they're in these very like localized, specific places. Not a big, large one. Which again, Chicago, that's a big, 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 big park, but smaller scale. But the vibe that that and everything was free. You know, they do that, and they said they told us why they do it, and they said that it's meant to be free yeah who did 
the Millennium Park is meant to be oh, free. Oh, yeah. They, the amphitheater, everything they do there they is free. They created that entire park, built it, everything about it to be free. It was, it's for the community. Yeah, like, everything literally. there is community. I thought that was really cool. You know, oh, really? Concept. She said the Lions are celebrating yeah, his, his yeah. Family Heritage Month. What does that mean? Like, what does know. that mean for Maybe Sunday? they're recognizing it or something. Huh. Hispanic Heritage Month is yeah. going on. Oh, so September. we went to a White Sox game, too. That was dope. Just do stuff like that. I'm going to just tell y'all, if I can influence y'all to do anything outside of going experience. down to City Hall, go yeah. experience some things, man. Like, And it doesn't cost that much. Going to Chicago trip is pretty simple. Three-hour drive, hotel room. If you just stay one night, you're looking at about 160 bucks. And then we bought tickets to the White Sox game on our way out of there, and they were fifty bucks a piece to sit right on the field. We were like four rows up from the. Somebody field. Somebody was like, "You can get them for eleven bucks." We seen there. the Tigers actually play. We watched the Tigers play the White Sox. That was cool. It was cool. It was hands sweet. down great experience. Yeah, and it wasn't that expensive. It wasn't mm-hmm. bad at all. But it's just like pay for experiences, and instead of gathering more bills up, like I'm just trying to really enjoy the rest of my little years I got left on this earth, man. And I, I wish that everybody would do that. Because you just don't ever know what tomorrow brings. Like, what tomorrow could bring. You know what I mean? You could be feeling great today, and the next day, you know, you find out something's crazy going on, and you would have wished you had new days back. But also, on top of that fact, is to always live in that moment and appreciate when you're in it. Even if you ain't feeling the greatest. And we know a lot about that with health and <clears throat> stuff like that going on. But, um, you know, I always tell my dad this, and I think that, it's something that I, I don't know how I came to this realization, but I recognize what gratitude means now, like I, in a really in-depth way, because every summer for a long time in my life, I always look back at the last summer like, man, last summer was dope. Yo, this summer sucks. And you can only do that for three years before you recognize like, idiot, you just said that about last summer. And then now you're saying that about this summer. And then the next year, you're going to say the same thing about year, last summer. Every, year, every, every year. year was the last year that was the greatest. And you didn't enjoy it when it was in that moment. You were saying that the last year was the greatest. So uh, just re- recognizing that part, like, enjoy your days. Like, I really do enjoy every season of the year except winter. I love spring. I love summer. I love fall. And I love the first part of winter. But, like, the 10th month of winter, that's when it gets <laughs> freaking old. Then I'm like, okay. When it hurts. Basically, when winter starts hurting, like yeah. just going out, like it hurts. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anybody likes that. But I don't mind like the still can go outside, like if you're dressed appropriately, yeah. you're all right, you know. Yeah, but once mm-hmm. stuff gets like dirt, like dirty, like the snow gets dirty and it's just caked in it's everything, it's just freezing ass cold. Yeah, but anyways, just enjoy your enjoy yourself and try to take that that time, get stock of like the day um, that you're in when you're in it, not have to wait till next year to to think about what it is and how great it is. Yeah. And it just it creates more capacity. I think it does a lot. It creates a lot more capacity. And for us, you know, like I was talking about earlier, you know, if you use all of your capacity up and all your spins thinking like, oh, we'll go enjoy that this weekend, then you'll go year over year over year, never pulling your kayaks out, Man, never pulling your bike out, us. never taking <clears throat> a camping trip. Like because when you did have a free day, finally, because there was nothing going on. I didn't feel good. You didn't feel good. I didn't have the energy or I was so stressed that week that now so I have we, to recoup. So we you know? own those things. We own bikes. We own an RV, an actual motor home. We own kayaks and we basically haven't used the RV but one time in the last three years. Why? Because we can't be nowhere. Like I remember we bought the RV in 2019 um, and probably since then we've used it 10 times and since four or five years. During the pandemic. But that's because, the and that was during the pandemic. But after that, once the fight started to happen and we all engaged in all the things, Can't we not have for time too long. to be away that long. And we would get away and things would start happening and we'd be like, mm. man, we got to get back. Those days are over. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't to say we wasted, but a lot of years was gone towards that, yo, where there was just a lot of that. Yeah. And you yeah. don't get that back. You don't get time. You don't get time with your family. Hell back. no. I went from yeah, 33 you know. to 43 quick. How did that happen? 33, I got hired on the fire department. 43 years old now. I can vividly, like, in in, in this isn't that many years, but just to give time. I've Just yesterday, I turned 39. Like. You want me to give you a better example? Like, where did those three years go? The pandemic was five years ago. In March of this year, the pa- or next year, the pandemic was five years ago. Does that not boggle y'all's mind? Five years. What? I met most of y'all during that time. 
Yeah, man. Think about everything. I mean, it's been a lot, y'all. Like, I mean, let's give each other a hand and some pats on the back that we have all lived collectively through some. I know, but you know what I'm saying? Years. Like, what I'm trying to get the world to understand is that we live that time frustrated, fighting, angry, hurt, disappointed, and all of those things. And I, what I want to say to the world is I would love for us to just take a reset. And this is why I'm saying this. A lot of people want to reset, but don't have an avenue to do it. A lot of people want to make good, but don't have an avenue to do it. Give your ops an avenue to rectify scenarios and situations and move past it. Even if it's just like, okay, we're going to just cut it all out and move on. Um, yeah. Because what I'm seeing right now in our community is like we're literally, and I say this all the time, we're really like in half an inch, if you were thinking of a whole measuring tape, we are, we're in half an inch to being like the most beautiful community in the state of Michigan. And I mean that for real, because we got a lot of amazing people, yo, that, I mean, a lot, not every city has that, yo. Like most cities are divided very, very prominently from financial statuses. But not Lansing. Everybody's kind of in the same boat. No matter what your finances look like, we're all trying to see each other do great, do better, right? I'm just saying, like, we're really, like, almost there, yo. And we have good people fighting the good fight. Like, we really do. A lot, a lot of cities have that in, in different That's arenas. That's what I mean. You know, we have great like, people fighting the good fight. We had people, like, I was saying this the other day. I went to the Mikey 23 March, and then we're going to get off here. I just want to say, some. Just I will, we'll close up here. Um, but with gun violence prevention, our gun violence intervention, we have two of the most prominent gun violence prevention programs working in Lansing with Advanced Peace, which is a nationally recognized, nationally known, Department of Justice recognized uh, intervention program. And we have Omaha 360 and the Omaha Empowerment Network, which also is a collaborative that has been recognized by the Department of Justice. And, uh, and, and is nationally known in Lansing. Lansing has 113,000 people in it. The cities that these are in are huge. Little old Lansing has both of those working for it. Little old Lansing has a Sarah Anthony in position as the appropriations chair. Little old Lansing has uh, council members who are actually out here committed to the community, right? We have uh, you know, multiple advocates, Mike Carl. Lansing has Mike Carl. Y'all don't understand, but he's nationally known. Lansing has a Mike Carl. Um, a Jerry Norris. Lansing has a Jerry Norris. Lansing has a us. Lansing has, um, you know, a Larry Wallace, who I like and love, right? Lansing has amazing stuff going on, man, and we're almost there. But this is what I'm saying with that. And I'm a guilty of it, too. This is what I'm telling y'all. I'm going to set the foot first, the first foot forward to show you how that's done. We all want to heal and move forward in a positive fashion, but that history, boy, whoo, it's hard. It, Michigan moves so slow, it's hard to get over history. We move slow, yo. And I feel like as long as there's no new harm, we've got to set a standard where we say, okay, this is negative, this, this is zero. This is negative one, negative two, negative three. This is positive one, positive two, positive three. We're at zero right now. Let's give it at least that. If you step into zero, negative one, then we're done. We're not going back forward. But if you can give somebody the zero to start at and see how we can move forward, even if there was old beef, bad blood, whatever the case is, this is me talking to y'all, right? But I'm saying that I think that if we was able to just do that, we would get over this plateau that we've been in of stagnancy when it comes to fixing the issues we have in our city. If we was all just say, okay, that was some dumb shit that happened years ago, but I'm going to start this person at a zero. And you might find that they all they've wanted was that opportunity, but didn't know how to bridge the gap to conversation to you. So I'm just saying, let's see how this might work positively. If everybody could leave from this conversation and say, I hate that dude, but he gets a zero. I'm going to put him <laughs> at a zero right now and we'll see what happens. Let's move I'm going to be trepidatious a little bit, but I'm going to move in a, in a, in a transparent, in a, in a good way with this and see how it goes. Just try it. So anyways, I think we're back. Expect this type of conversation though. Expect some more upbeat, chopping it up, talking with y'all type convo. 
a little less of the old uh, what happened at council. Cool? It might, it might creep in. Man. Because uh, I ain't there. Yeah. So I don't know if it will. <laughs> Unless something happens that I need to be there, I'm straight. Uh, we will kick into the commission meetings. But other than that, nah, I'm, I'm good. Um, anyways. We're still out here, though. Our time is up. We love y'all. Do you have anything else you need? I don't. We All right, y'all. Back on. Good to be back we on. Sorry we started late, but uh, <laughs> let's see how it builds. Share it out. If y'all enjoyed the show, give it a like and a love. Oh, I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to go through one time and show all the people that we've invited to like or follow the page that are just standing there. Yo, go to the page right now. Like and hit follow. like and follow. Go to the page, hit like and follow. If you mess with us, love us, go to the page, hit like and follow. Yes. All right. All right, love y'all. Hope to talk to you, not about you. Peace.